Okay. Welcome. Today is Thursday, December 8th, 2016 of the Arlington School Committee. Uh, I'd like to welcome Jason Levy, who is the current, is it president of the Arlington um, AEA. Um, and is there any public comment? No, okay. Okay, so uh, next I would like to um, ask uh, Mr. Remy to come up and uh, we're going to talk about, is that, is that right? You. Yeah, okay, great, thank you. So actually I want to give some background on this. Um, as I was talking to other school committee members in different towns, it became very clear that other towns get yearly suspension reports. And I thought it'd be a good idea to have an Arlington given um, how much attention, national attention has been on this issue, um, the realization that it's a lot more destructive for kids than we <coughs> originally probably may have thought, um, racial disparity issues, and so it'd just be good to sort of see this data um, as a, on a yearly basis. So thank you for coming. Um, are we waiting for? I suspect you guys do have a way to um, log in and take a look at the data. We, we can, we have it. yes, yeah, we yeah. Have it. Okay, yeah. um, so I'm just gonna go through, and first thing I wanna point out is uh, when we look at um, the first main page, what is listed is not uh, the complete uh, scope of all the different um, race and ethnicity uh, combinations that exist, uh, but these are the ones that uh, show up in the report. So rather than just going down the line and showing you all the uh, combinations that don't have anything um, on record. Um, so as you go through, uh, the highlights here are through the secondary school being the middle and high school. There were 80 total suspensions in the 15-16 school year um, spread amongst 51 students. Um, 34 of those students were general ed and 17 were special ed students. Um, the next thing you'll see is, again, the combination of the middle and high school, how that breaks down into percentages where we have, um, before I even get into that, just a quick background. The uh, first big thing you'll notice is that uh, they're first categorized by either Hispanic or non-Hispanic, and then all the potential um, combinations after that. So our largest pool being uh, non-Hispanic white, making up 59% of the total suspensions. Bless you. Um, followed by, and there's a big drop off from there, where non-Hispanic black Afri and African American are 21%, uh, then the non-Hispanic Asian making 8%, and so on and so forth. Um, oh, bless you. Um, on your next screen, you'll see just the uh, the Audison Middle School, where there were 22 total suspensions um, across the 13 students there, and you see the breakdown between male, female, <laughs> special ed, and the total aggregate number of days that were missed amongst those uh, 13 students who were suspended. None of those suspensions were for more than 10 consecutive days. And finally, we have the same breakdown for the high school, uh, 58 total suspensions there across 38 students, uh, 13 male, 25, I'm sorry, 13 female, 25 male, um, 139 total days missed, and only two suspensions that were of 10 consecutive days. Questions, comments? Yes, Mr. Um, Steelman. Uh, so, uh, uh, is our, uh, refresh my memory, is our practice to have uh, in-school suspensions or are they mostly out-of-school suspensions or what's our approach? There are in-school and out-of-school suspensions, uh, but as it's uh, classified is any time that is spent outside of the primary learning environment is a suspension. So this doesn't discriminate between in-school and out-of-school suspensions, just any time that you are not in the primary learning environment. What, do you get a rough sense of the breakdown of in-school and out-of-school suspensions? I do not available here, no. Dr. Reddy? But the high school is, 
It's a, it, I, I wouldn't venture to, to say. It's certainly in the neighborhood of 50-50. There's a lot. The short-term ones are often in school. We have an yeah. in-school suspension room, and the middle school does too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, Mr. Slickman, did you have? I thought you. Yeah. I'm still thinking. Okay, Mr. Hainer. The, the going back to the, the the grouping. Is that the groupings that are reported to the state? Yes, that is how they appear. And again, that is not the complete right. scope I of mean, everything that I has understand. appeared. Um, but yes, that's. This is exactly, um, the, the data source here is a combination of the, uh, the SIMS report that just captures all the demographic information for all of our students and the, safety and the school safety and discipline report that gets sent out every summer tracking all the suspensions, what the offense was, how long they were, how many days they were missed and the academic plan that was for those days. So the combination of the two gave birth to this report. This question may go to, uh, uh, the superintendent, the out-of-school out suspensions, when does it, is, is it triggered that we're required to provide uh, education? Is it so many days or is it? It's after 10 days, but we, we certainly want to have all of our students stay right. um, current with their classes. And, mo and if not 100%, the vast, vast majority of teachers have the assignments through their websites, and so it's very easy for them to stay right. on it. But we do provide tutoring, and especially if they're a special education student, we definitely, even in short term, um, often do that. Thank you. And as part of the um, school safety and discipline report, uh, that is included, and I can tell you that um, they have to report what the ed plan is regardless of the length of the suspension mm -hmm. and overall it's typically like Dr. Bodhi said um, either something is emailed to them or they are given some work to take uh, with them while they're away. Okay. Just follow up on that? Uh, yes, Mr. Reina. Uh Manifestation hearings, is that reported to the state too? When, we, uh, when, when a, a student is out uh, related uh, Yes. Uh, that's oh, yeah. for a special education student. Right. So if they're going to accumulate more than 10 days um, suspension, that would constitute a change in placement. So you have to determine if it's a manifestation of their disability. Mm -hmm. So um, we do record that with our special ed data. We, we wait for a 10 day, the 10 day mark to do this for a manifestation hearing? <clears throat> yes. And contrary to what people think is best practice that they tell you in schools is different than what um, the attorneys in the law will tell you. <laughs> um, you don't I, do it before the 10th I, day. I, I know that you're required to do it at, at the 10 day mark, but I mean, I mean, as an educator, I'd want to know if the ed plan is, is if the incident our incidents are related to the educational plan in place so that we can make the that changes. doesn't prevent you from doing any of that stuff so you can have an FBA you can have a team meet to discuss the student but if you were to meet and have a manifestation determination say you do that on day six and you determine that the behavior is a manifestation of their disability you can no longer suspend that student for that behavior for that type of behavior so then you wouldn't be able to suspend them even for that seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth day now that you've determined it. So that's why you don't hold the manifestation determination until they're going to miss the 11th day. All that kind of best practice around planning and getting a team together to discuss. If you see a pattern of behavior um, <coughs> developing, you most certainly should be gathering a team well before you're at 10 days to be discussing what are the antecedents, what is the setting, what, you know, mm -hmm. to problem solve. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Dr. Allison Ampey. Um, so I didn't understand why we were given, I'm not saying it was mm -hmm. bad that we were given this, but I didn't know the backstory until yes, you, right. you discussed it. Yep. And so I was kind of looking at it, just trying to understand what we were looking at and what we were trying to think about and not knowing. Mm -hmm. The thing that I've been especially concerned about are the reports that were potentially, or, or in, as a nation at large, were, were um, certain students are um, especially students of color, are, expen are suspended at higher rates yep. than their prevalence in the population mm -hmm. would suggest. And so that's data I would have liked to have in this report, and, and I, I don't think we gave any indication. Yeah, actually, I, I, I didn't give any direction. I just right, said we wanted right. to. So, I, think so uh, I do think we want to maybe direct what, what we want to see in the future, you know, next yeah. year. I, I'd like to I, make this a yearly I, I thing. Did, actually look on the DESI website to try and find some of this mm -hmm. stuff. Um, and to our you know, as you say, it's, it's, it's there. 
and it has some information, but I can't like I can't break it down by school or anything. So part of that is um, there are. If you just look at the breakdown, you know, we'll say that there are 80 suspensions over 51 students, mm -hmm. which then means that there are some repeat offenders. Mm -hmm. And if I were to dig down any deeper, we are then at risk at uh, revealing mm -hmm. who exactly yeah. those students are. Mm -hmm. So, you well, know, the further you go down the I, rabbit hole, the I, more I, it starts to say, oh, now we're talking about. I, I'm guessing, I think Dr. Alessandri is asking, um, we should see maybe a comparison between um, uh, students of color who are suspended and then our gener our, what percentage of the population they represent, and then a comparison of those, um, that that might be useful data for us to keep track of and see if we're making progress there or if you know, we're slipping or, you know, that's, it's, it, as, as Dr. Hassan mentioned, it is a national problem, so we're not unique in, in addressing this issue, but it's something we want to make progress on. Absolutely, and yeah. I can tell you, um, I did put this together, uh, between the middle and high school, um, there are 130 total students that are identified and reported as uh, black or African American. Mm -hmm. um, of the 2,505 total students in the schools, mm -hmm. um, so when you compare that to what was reported um, in that report, you can start to get a better picture of percentages then. Right, okay, thanks. Yes, Mr. Slipin. Okay, yeah, I mean, looking at the numbers of the high school, uh, you know, you don't have that many suspensions in the district so that you're not gonna generate a real pattern. Uh, so would I say that things are statistically significant, you know, not really. Um, the, you know, the rates are higher for males and females uh, at, at the high school. Uh, the one number that bumps up uh, is the Odyssey. It just looks bad, but it's only four kids. Right. So that if it's four kids versus three kids, I mean, you know, you don't know individual circumstances, and that's not an indicator of anything systemic going on per se. So we really rely upon the administration to say, and certify that the, uh, uh, that the discipline that we're handing out within the district is fair and equitable, which is uh, certainly a concern of ours. Uh, not a concern in a negative manner, but a concern that's something that we care about deeply. Mm -hmm. um, we care about equity in, uh, in this district, and we care about treating every student with respect. Um, so, the, the one thing that strikes me is just the low number of suspensions, and I think that what the data is telling me right now is that the district is making a concerted effort not to suspend students wherever mm -hmm. possible. Mm -hmm. And when you're encountering a 10-day suspension, those are usually for unavoidable, unavoidable reasons, uh, and without being without wanting to go deeper into the data because so few students are involved, I'm thankful to have the report. And I'm thankful we've got an administrative staff that is looking into this and taking this seriously and, mm -hmm. and striving for equity in the system. Thank you. And, and I do. think, again, without um, going much deeper because it starts to identify yeah. them personally, yeah. um, is when you start to see what the offense types are mm -hmm. leading to certain suspensions. Um, when you see that, you like you said, some of it is absolutely unavoidable. This, this offense leads to this consequence, which is mm -hmm. you know, going to be this many days mm -hmm. missed between hearings and so on and so forth. Um, but you're right, as, as it is, there are not a whole lot. And you, know, you look at the charts and you see the percentages, but when it's over fit, you know, 38 students, mm -hmm. yeah, it's going to look like a bigger percentage than it actually is. I, I know, because as, as a former principal, you know, nothing will tear your gut out more than suspending a kid. And the first time I did it to a first grader, it was one where I had absolutely no discretion in the matter. Mm -hmm. It was sort of a requirement. Uh, I won't get into what happened, but, you know, it was a tough two days for me, and we went out to dinner at Not Your Average Joe's, and we just had to decompress that night. It, it was personally upsetting for me and, and um, 
and, and, I, and I know that the, the ethic in this district is to, uh, to do the right thing for kids, and I'm appreciative of the data. So I think it would be nice to track this over time, because it does seem like we um, were making improvements, significant improvements the last few years, so that we were suspending greater numbers of students, and we really um, mm -hmm. made an effort. I think as the national attention has been brought to this issue, Arlington has taken notice and really sort of thought, been much more thoughtful about this. Um, I have a couple questions. Uh, in, uh, in previous years, we've had elementary school suspensions. Were there none in this year? No. Okay. Um, there were none this year, and I can actually, in my time here, there was just one okay. uh, two years ago, so. Okay. And then the other, one other question is the percentage in the um, pie chart. Sure. Is that... Um, absolute number of students or is that suspension incidents of the of those who were suspended so num number of, of kids number of students rather okay okay thanks anything else great thank you very much for doing this on short notice and taking your time thanks good night good night good night thank you thanks okay <laughs> So we have um, next the um, budget priorities uh, at the elementary school levels. Now, do we have, I know we just got something uploaded in Novus. Do we have any hard copies of it? Um, I, I don't know if that's useful for anybody. We could, we could make them. No, I, I, actually, only if it's, I, it, it was a little frustrating that we got these so late, so we didn't have time to really read through them before. But, um, I, I think when you hear their report, you'll understand what a busy group of people these are. No, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> would, you like some hard, would you like us to make some hard copies? Uh, yes. Well, yeah, so it might be I, useful I, I to some of the members. Not right. it, no, it, we have a no, excuse me. Rob. For me, it doesn't have to be for right now, but I'd like a copy eventually. Okay, got it. Is there right. something in that's just, uh, the extra paper? Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. We're going to sit in order of speaking? Yeah. I'll just work. I'm going to go second. She's going to go first. She's going to go fourth. We can take it. Ready? We can. Break. The great. I w Are we waiting for the copies? No, no, no. You can All start right, now. Um, right. I want to you to introduce yourself and just remind you, as I know you, you have that, to talk into the microphone. Absolutely. Which doesn't say Amplify, but for Jax. Yeah. Yep. Great. Good evening, committee. Uh, Madam Chair, Superintendent. Introduction. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Who are you? I'm Thad Dewin, the principal of Valley. OK. Stephanie Zerjikoff, bracket. Mark McEnany, Bishop. Kristen DeFrancisco, Hardy. Karen Hartley, Pierce. And Karen Donato, Thompson. So uh, again, good evening. Uh, we're um, excited to be here to present to you today um, to talk about uh, the budget considerations for next year. Uh, we want to start tonight by kind of thanking you and to kind of give you an update of items that we prioritized last year and that we were able to receive. Uh, we're happy to say that the addition of learning specialists um, has allowed us to mitigate some of the larger caseloads and to begin to think about how we implement co-teaching strategies to help all students. Um, also, increased coaching staff has helped give teachers the support they need as they implement new curriculum in the areas of math, reading, and writing. And our new science FOSS kits um, are in classrooms and teachers are working to learn about and implement the new hands-on curriculum and we've received nothing but positive feedback um, as it pertains to the support that Larry Weathers has uh, given the teachers and the staff around the implementation of the new FOSS curriculum. Um, even though we, we asked for full-time <coughs> kindergarten teaching assistance at all elementary schools, um, like I said, we weren't able to get them, but we were able to implement full-time TAs in some of the larger 
kindergarten classrooms, and we have seen a remarkable difference in the Tools of the Mind program for kindergarten, having that um, additional support full time in the kindergarten classrooms. So this year we come before you to prioritize what we feel uh, will help our elementary schools meet all the important goals that we have established as a district. You will hear about some of these goals in our discussion tonight, and it's also important in this discussion to take a look at what we as principals are experiencing on a daily basis. As the Arlington Public Schools student body increases, so does the complexity of the students that we're receiving, increasing the responsibility and the time demands on the building principal, our instructional leadership responsibilities and personal leadership styles are now compromised due to these facts. It's become increasingly challenging to do our jobs at the level that we personally hold ourselves and in which the district and the school committee expect of us. Research shows about 25% of children have been diagnosed with anxiety dis disorders. About 14% have students or, uh, of students are on are learning disabilities. 9% have been diagnosed with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, and about 11% suffer from depression. Several of our elementary schools have become level two schools as measured by the DESE over the past few years. This is attributed to the constant demands and the, challenging, the challenges of the elementary school program while teachers, specialists, and administrators work to support tier one students in the inclusive general education classroom along with our high needs tier two and three students who require specialized direct and specialized, I'm sorry, systematic instruction. So for clarification, high needs students belongs to at least one of the following individual subgroups, students with disabilities, English language learners, former English language learners, or economically disadvantaged students. So for a school to be considered making progress towards narrowing proficiency gaps, the cumulative PPI or the distance between general education students and, and achieving uh, proficiency and special education students and closing that gap um, must be at uh, 75 or higher. In short, in order to stay committed to the high standards to which the committee or the community and our students have become accustomed and to support the growing high needs student due to increased enrollment growth. growth. The elementary principal group has identified three contributing factors that are affecting our ability to lead our educational communities effectively. Principals, this group here, we've reached or gone beyond capacity. Daily scheduling constraints have limited administrative liberty to design general curriculum programs within the classroom, along with interventions, both at the general education and special education level. Social workers are doing more than their scope of work as they strive to support the social emotional well-being of all students within our schools and those who require specialized attention. So with this said, uh, our four asks for the fiscal year 17 school year are elementary, I'm sorry, assistant principals at the elementary level. Increased FTEs for specialized staff, gym, music, library, um, music an increased board certified behavioral specialist, continued financial support for our social emotional programming, specifically responsive classroom and open circle training. Kristen's going to take over from here. Thank you, Mark. Uh, I'm just gonna go into each ask or start off by going into each ask. Uh, just to give you a little bit of a picture of why we asked for, why we think those things are going to help us to reach high need students. The success of high need students in an elementary school depends on many factors. Some of these, and I say some of these, are preventing disruptions to the classroom, providing high quality professional development for teachers, ensuring high quality curriculum experiences, building the capacity of teachers to implement social emotional programming, supporting intervention programs in math and reading, creating a schedule that allows for services to be delivered in an efficient way, having enough staff to support a schedule that matches our pedagogical vision, 
creating a climate where all students feel confident and as a result can access curriculum, promoting an environment with growth mindset, facilitating data meetings where teachers understand how to use data to inform instruction, providing feedback during evaluation follow-up conversations with teachers that is meaningful and that contains through lines from evaluation to evaluation, working to promote a co-teaching environment where special educators are able to do important work with all students in classrooms, supporting the coaching staff in curriculum areas, developing an SST, which means student support team protocol, where teachers understand the response to intervention model and are able to bring data to the table to inform both academic and behavioral plans and strategies for children. Principal presence at special education team meetings so that signatures on IEPs represent a true consent to the plan in place for high need students and all students. Staff who are able to consistently meet with children that have been identified on IEPs as well as visit classrooms to address social emotional needs and social workers are often leaned on for problem solving outside of their social work responsibilities. And these, again, are just some of the things that we feel like are in, and are in our everyday work. Um, all of those items listed above require involvement of the principal at a high level in order to bring about significant improvement in schools and the district, especially for high needs populations. There must be a clear vision for leadership. We are concerned that because the principal is involved in making all of these facets run smoothly with minimal administrative support at the building level and with schedule restraints and growing school populations, this is becoming increasingly more difficult. Assistant principals with a clear defined role at the elementary level would support the work necessary to ensure success for high need students and all of our students. This ask would free the principal to, to be more involved with educational leadership initiatives. It would also allow social workers to be able to fulfill their roles as intended. And Karen Hartley is going to continue. The elementary school schedule is a key component to making sure that our district goals and curriculum initiatives are possible to execute. Without schedules that support common planning time, co-teaching methods, coaching programs, intervention plans, and teacher collaboration through learning walkthroughs, we will not be able to meet our goals effectively. The schedule creates a struggle for the following reasons. Art is on a different timetable. Specialists are shared between two and oftentimes among three different school buildings. Because of this, individual school schedules cannot be built until the specialist schedule has been decided at the district level. This impacts the ability to give common planning time, stagger subject areas to accommodate special education and ELL services, schedule for Title I intervention, provide RTI services. Instrumental music is difficult to schedule during the school day because the limited amount of staff is spread among seven elementary schools and the middle school. Students are sometimes missing common core subjects to participate. Because we have all these parameters to consider before being able to schedule core subjects, it is often impossible to create a schedule where teachers have common planning time. Consideration of these parameters also impacts how well we are able to deliver special education services and support co-teaching practices. This is why we ask for more specialist positions that are community-based and can facilitate both the growing number of students in all schools and to help us create a schedule that matches our educational philosophy. And now getting back to our, our ask for BCBAs. Behavior analysis is the scientific study of principles of learning and behavior. Two primary areas of study include the experimental analysis of behavior and applied behavior analysis. The experimental analysis of behavior is the basic science of the discipline and has over many decades accumulated a substantial and well-respected body of research literature on how behavior is learned and changes over time. The experimental analysis of behavior is a scientific foundation of applied behavior analysis, ABA, ABA is a systematic approach for influencing socially important behavior through the identification of reliably, reliably related environmental variables and the production of behavior change techniques that make the use of those findings. Practitioners of behavior analysis provide services consistent with the dimensions of ABA. Common services may include, but not limited to, conducting behavioral assessments, analyzing data, 
writing and revising behavior analytic treatment plans, training others to implement components of the treatment plans, and overseeing the implementation of treatment plans. Behavior analysts are qualified to provide services to clients with a variety of needs, including improvements in organizational functioning, for example, staff performance management and pace structure interventions, skill deficits, for example, communication and adaptive behavior, and problem behavior, for example, aggression and self-injurious behavior, among, among others. In our setting, BCBAs also help to build the capacity of all teachers who work with our students. Learning how to implement a behavioral plan for a student is essential to that student's success. <coughs> At this time, the district has three BCBAs for all Arlington Public Schools. Not nearly a big enough team to meet the needs of our growing population of students. Our BCBAs are straight out and at no fault of their own, lack the bandwidth, collaboration, detail, and follow through to support the teams of teachers and staff effectively. As a result, social workers in collaboration with the BCBAs have taken on responsibilities outside of their scope of work, which in turn compromises their work. This is why we're asking for additional BCBAs to expand the important work of helping students to be able to access their classrooms and build the capacity of teachers to maintain this work. Finally, one of the ways that the district has begun to help elementary schools welcome all students and establish communities where students are able to thrive socially and emotionally is the responsive classroom approach. This approach is a way of teaching that emphasizes social, emotional, and academic growth in a strong and safe school community. Developed by classroom teachers, the approach consists of practical strategies for helping students build academic and social emotional competencies day in and day out. The seven principles that guide this approach are that the social and emotional curriculum is as important as the academic curriculum. How children learn is, is as important as what they learn. Great cognitive growth occurs through social interaction. To be successful academically and socially, Children need to learn a set of social and emotional skills, cooperation, assertiveness, responsibility, empathy, and self-control. Knowing the children we, te we teach, individually, culturally, and developmentally, is as important as knowing the content we teach. Knowing the families of the children we teach is as important as knowing the children we teach. And how we, the adults at school, work together is as important as our individual competence. Lasting change begins with the adult community. Over the past three summers, the Success Grant has funded a four-day training for 30 staff members each summer on Responsive Classroom, its principles and best practices. This work has supported the need for a consistent approach to addressing student expectations. Through the use of common language, school-wide expectations, and community building activities, students are recognizing their voice and seeing their role as members of the greater school community. This contributes to positive social and emotional growth of both staff and students. Schools that have been using this approach have noticed a significant change in office referrals and a consistency around how teachers are working to make sure expectations are clear and consequences for students are logical. It is important that we are able to continue this work where it has started and begin this work in other schools. With a success grant ending, we are asking for resources to sustain responsive classroom and offer trainings for additional staff members throughout the district. So this concludes our ask for this budget consideration. We do appreciate your time and are more than happy to answer any questions that you might have for us. Great, thanks. Uh, questions, comments? Mr. Carton. Uh, thank you for your uh, careful consideration and uh, uh, what you put together and presented. Um, I'm sure you've, you've heard from the CFO that the budget outlook for next year is, is extremely uh, grim. Um, that's despite the town giving us a 6.6% 6 .6 increase, um, but all of that is being eaten up by other costs, uh, including the need to add classrooms at Thompson and Hardy due to enrollment growth. So we are looking at a very dire situation as far as funding new stuff. Um, and so, you know, hopefully w as you continue your meetings and, and working on the budget, um, you know, you'll, you'll try to prioritize some of these and, and see where we come out. Um, one thing I did want to ask about that I've asked about before is, 
Now we've added a, a significant amount of out of classroom um, staff over the years and you're, you're requ requesting additional out of classroom staff. We've added learning specialists, two or three per school, I mean one or two per school, a social worker, math and literacy coaches, and now we have a request for additional BCBA and, and assistant principals. Um, one way we can do that is by pushing on class sizes a little bit. So this year we have uh, nine sections that are in the 76 to 78. These are cohorts at a, at a school that are in the 76 to 78 range. And so those are divided pretty evenly. Three of them are split into three classes that are relatively big. Four of them are split into small classes that are quite small. Uh, two, three of those cohorts are gonna push out to middle school, but we'll still have, you know, these numbers will change over the summer, but we'll still have about um, six or so of them next year. And so I guess as you're looking at, you know, what you can do to fund some of your initiatives, are you willing to push those classes to 26 kids per class, or do you prefer to keep them small? You don't have to answer tonight, but that's something I think you need to think about. And if the decision is to push them to 26, then that's something you need to start talking about with your parents, because they come to us. As soon as the number goes to 25 or 26, they come to us, um, and they're very concerned about that. Whether there's really a significant difference between 26 and 24, I'm not sure, but that's where, that's where we hear a lot of concern. So um, happy to hear any response or, or let you think about that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think that um, uh, knowing that we were coming to here tonight with these asks, are um, they seem pretty grand, but they are um, going to be extremely necessary as we move forward with um, the class sizes um, and the profile of kid as we um, described tonight, uh, the student. Um, the large class sizes, we would definitely you know, we're, we, we are talking about it. We know that we have to look at things to kind of give up, um, eliminate, cut, whatever it may be. Um, so those are ongoing. Um, we don't, we knew we didn't have, the, have to have the answers tonight, but please know that we are in serious um, consideration and talks as a, as a principal group with the superintendent, assistant superintendent, as we um, look to um, uh, obtain um, at least, you know, a, a couple of these asks. Great. Yep. The other thing I would say is, you know, in um, looking at the ways that schools have built their staff over the last few years, and you mentioned learning specialists and coaches, and um, which are extremely important um, for a lot of different reasons for our teachers, for our achievement growth. But I also hope that you're noticing that what's straining buildings on top of the, the numbers that we're seeing rise are the social, emotional, and mental health of our kids. And learning specialists are a part of that answer. Reading specialists and coaches who work around the classroom may not necessarily be as close to it as we would like. Um, and when you know, buildings are creeping up towards that 500 number, and um, at the same time, our kids are stressed out um, for whatever reason for a variety of reasons, actually. And that does compromise the quality that any one child or any one um, adult can do their job. Mr. Hainer. Oh, I'm sorry, yes, please go. Dear Francesca. This, the, these things that we have asked for tonight have actually been in our conversations for the past couple of years, the assistant principal one especially, but we've held off on asking for that because we know that there are other things that you know, we pushed as a priority before that. Um, and we've been able to get some of those things. So you just referenced some of them, Thad, you know, the coaching, the interventionists, um, the, the increase in learning specialists. You know, those things were really important for us to have in place, and we're grateful that we have them. But now what we're seeing happen is we've made these really careful decisions about where we want to put our resources for kids. And in doing that, we are at the helm of making sure those things happen the way that they should be happening. So kids are reaping the benefits from the resources that were put there, um, the expertise of, of the people that we've hired, and what we're finding now is we're at a place that if we don't ask for it, those things that we've put in place are not gonna be run the way that they, sh they should be. We're not gonna get as much out of those important things as we think we should. 
Um, I don't know if class sizes is where we'd go to think about making a, a concession. Um, I think we all agree that, you know, once you start to up those class sizes, it's more than just bodies in a room to one person. You know, it is increasing the anxiety of a student that doesn't get the teacher's at attention or, you know, it is increasing, um, you know, the inability to implement those FOSS kits the way that they should be implemented. So I'm not so sure that that would be our first go-to place, but I'm hearing your thinking, and I know everybody is, about, you know, how are we going to think out of, out of the box a little bit about this? And, and I think Kathy and Laura are willing to, to help us do that. We had that discussion before we put this on as, as an ask. Um, so I think it's important to think about, you know, yes, we do need to be creative and the budget is in dire straits, but I think I can pretty much speak for everybody when I say I don't know if class size would be the first place we would go if we, if we could help it. Yeah. Um, well, just to, to add, uh, to end this uh, question, I, I feel like large class sizes are going to be the standard. They already are. 26, I, I don't flinch anymore at 26. It's the, you know, the geography within a classroom once you, you know, reach 26 where you're going to put all the kids. However, but it's about great teaching. Um, and, and regardless if it's 18 kids or 26 kids, um, we as instructional leaders need to support our teachers and our teams, and we need to be able to effectively evaluate and supervise these staff. And with the, the burden uh, and the responsibilities that we have taken on, the increased responsibilities that we've taken on as a principal group, um, really great. And my concern is, is um, our evaluation and our supervision of our staff is becoming compromised. We're not able to do it effectively enough. Um, and, and that's where the meat of um, uh, uh, student achievement and best practice and increased be best practice is going to happen. And um, those things have, like I said, have become compromised. Uh, I, everyone has things, but uh, for Mr. Hainer first. Uh, uh, when I first came on the committee, the first budget uh, hearing was uh, a request to try social workers. And we, uh, it was temporary. They, they, I think the seven schools shared them. The following year, there was a request to make them full time. Uh, in a time when the budgets were really, were tight. That has paid off dramatically. The only problem is now we're overextending those social workers. I am an advocate of small class sizes. I do not support class sizes of 26. My fifth grade class had 54 students in it. The desks and chairs were bolted to the thing, and it was pure research. The teacher was the source of all information. The kids just said yes and produced paper. Those days are long gone. The stuff that we're asking of our students, we just spent uh, a period, this committee, uh, looking at test scores. Uh, preparing those kids for those test scores, when you have a large class size and have one, just one student be a disruptive influence, can disrupt the whole, it has a ripple effect. I'm preaching now, I'm preaching to the choir. Education is a very innovative group of people. I think it's our job, we're hearing you people, and I'm not knocking my colleague, uh, Mr. Cardin, but it's our job to find a way to maximize the education. You are the experts asking us, you've given us a good document to work from. We have to find a way to maximize those education, and I don't want to su give something and lose something at the same time. Thank you. I, I, I'm not sure who was first, but I'm going to go for Dr. Allison Ampey. Okay. Um, unfortunately, I need to echo what Mr. Cardin said. Um, we had our budget subcommittee meeting this week, and it's not looking good. Um, it's not that we don't hear what you're saying or value what you're saying or appreciate the that what you're saying is correct and needful and, and everything, it's we don't have anywhere to pay for it. And I don't, you know, last year we were able to kind of pull off a minor miracle and get the town to give us some extra money. We're not going to be able to do that this year. We know next year we're going to be opening the Gibbs, I mean, the, the next fiscal year, not, not the coming one, but the one after that. We're going to be opening the Gibbs. That's going to need some significant increase in funds and we're going to need to be so we're looking how we're going to progress all the way down the road we can't just keep going for the little bumps if we're going to the next time we're going to not be able to miss the big bump so when we ask you you know what could you give up or what you know what are the trade-offs we really we're looking for 
input back because decisions are going to have to be made and they can be made with the best input from you folks or we're going to do the best we can and it's not because we don't agree with everything you're saying it's just the budget only goes so far and right now a whole lot of the extra that we're going to get is already spoken for and it's spoken for with things that we can't change so we're working within what we got and so thing you know questions i would have are um how many people would need assistant principals and could a partial assistant principal is that better than none or is it better to put the money someplace else um you talk about with the success grants that some of the schools have been doing this and and that it's important this and then begin it in other schools which schools have done you know how many schools have done it do they all need training again or is it you know are we just talking about training a few people or you know is is there anything we can do there um so and these aren't questions i expect you to be able to answer now it, it's this is our chance for us to talk to you and and give you an idea and i wish we had had a chance to get a better handle on what the numbers are but we're just getting the first glimpse of things and it's just it's not looking pretty um and yeah so i guess i don't actually have a question sorry yeah no no, no. The questions <laughs> comments is what i think is appropriate here can i say something real quick yeah. I, I think yes. that um this group's uh aware of the reality um our first responsibility is to create priorities mm -hmm from our perspective in our buildings to support the kids and support our teachers and our teams. I think we've started that conversation about um, it, here's where we're at, how do we get to the outcome or the ideal outcome and it might not be the ideal path that we all see. Um, but Kathy and Laura have worked with us and are willing to hear our ideas. I can assure you that our our perspective on where to find that money isn't going to be at the expense of um, the quality of education for the children in our schools. I mean, you, the budget is broken into lots of different categories. Elementary buildings are one small piece of a big pie. So, you, at, you know, as we explore those options, we're, we're, we probably won't be looking at um, our own staffing necessarily. Or, I guess I'll stop right there. Does that make sense? It, it makes sense, but it's also you know, we're going to have our secondary principals come in yeah. and they're going to also have me. Well, that's their responsibility. I, I get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but you don't get a point at them and say, no, take their money. Okay. So it, it's, you know, if, if we don't get feedback mm -hmm. from you about we're going to have to make our own, I mean, we'll, we'll be talking yeah. to Dr. Bodie and, and everyone and getting the best information we can, but decisions will be made yep. and it's not, because we didn't hear you and it's not because we didn't believe what you're saying it's we just can't make the dollars go any further i think too you know we i think we know that you would if if you were able to give us everything on this list you you would do it um you know i think that that goes without saying i also think that when a group of people you know like us and the secondary principals and special education and all the people you'll hear over the next you know few weeks talk about um what they're asking for it's such a passionate thing when we go and we look at this and we think about what it is we we want i mean we've met i don't know three four times we've been up at night in our google docs and talking back and forth so i think too when we do this we do this with a lens of you know this it's our responsibility to say these things you know to talk about how we see our our day in our day out and what we're doing for kids and make sure that we feel like we've communicated that i think we also understand and know i mean all too well that the money is the money <laughs> so you know giving us the opportunity to talk to you about what we think makes a good good sense uh, we're grateful for that and also you being candid and honest with us about okay this is what you're going to have to do in order to make some of these come true so we go back to that drawing board and, and we think with with Kathy and with Laura and on our Google Docs and whatever time at night that you know we figure out how we can get the bulk of or you know the most important parts of this you know so so we know we still have some work to do and you know appreciate being able to paint that picture in a way that we think makes makes sense yeah, uh, is it, is it good? Uh, Mr. Steelman. 
So um, we've all discussed the budget reality. That's pretty clear. I think I think I appreciate you coming in to give us this information, and the uh, you know the the path to change is a long one. So it's it's good to keep saying this year after year. Um, I you know I have been struck by how uh, understaffed we are at the administrative level in our schools, especially when we have schools of 400 plus students. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so it's always it's I've always had the impression that uh, the, the elementary schools, especially the larger ones, should have full-time uh, assistant principals. So I, my question is this: Would you know, I, I suspect if you put an assistant principal in a school, she or he would look different in each place depending on the mm -hmm. character mm -hmm. of the principal. Mm -hmm. One might be an instructional, instructional leader in another place, another might be better at student life mm -hmm. uh, issues. That's putting it, you know, in general terms. Mm -hmm. But would you, I guess the question I have is, is the, is the assistant principal position, position, which we've heard about for a long time, is it, you know, without naming a position in the school, is it more? Would you give that? Would you give up a, a position in the school for an assistant principal? If 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 Dr. Bodie said to you, you can have assistant principals if you do X, Y, and Z. <laughs> I know you don't want to give up. I mean, I mean, I don't know because when you reorganize a school. So I, it, that's that's a tricky question. And I yeah, realize without we have having a to talk about yeah. uh, personnel or yeah, right. staff, okay, correct. Uh, we have a, a a a very smart group here who yeah. are. Um, like you said, the assistant principal will look different in mm -hmm. every building. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. And and what that model looks like, we are trying to come up with what it, what the ideal model would be. Again, at any one of our schools. Yeah. I mean, we have 500 to three. Correct. Right? And right. so, um, how do we prioritize the needs? How do we um, um, combine efforts? Um, of a particular staff member uh, with administrative experience or um, you know different certifications uh, we, we're looking at a, a, a myriad of uh, possibilities because I mean you know you, you, mean you sometimes you bring in a, a certain talent level of talent and that mm -hmm. makes it if someone's leaving it makes it possible to not replace that person I mean we've all done that and Sure. And, and again, uh, the, the building principal, we used to say, yeah, we're, you know, we're the instructional leaders in our buildings. Well, yes, we are, and we're everything else on top of that. Yeah, I know. And yeah. the social emotional well being of our students and staff are on our list. And so we've become those keepers as well. And so we work very tightly with our, our social workers um, and our BCBAs and other support staff. Um, so our teachers are supported so they can support our our kids and um, by saying that you know who's to say you know the assistant principal can take on that that liaison that collaborative piece with the social work and BCBAs to free us up to you know concentrate more on instructional leadership supervision and evaluation yeah I mean you know as I said this is a long road and so if if not an assistant principal in FY 18 at one of our schools I would love to see it in FY 19 I'd like to see us get there because I do think it's critical for the overall you know stability and strength of the school yeah, I promise this is the last thing that I'll say tonight um, you know as the enrollment growth yeah. continues and the demands continue and you right. look at the ads that we've had at the elementary administrative level it's okay. been flatlined there has been no ads mm -hmm. whatsoever yeah. yeah no I, I get it now I had another question there I saw I saw something in here that said that um, something about Common planning time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Schedule, Special. right? Without schedules that support common planning time, but isn't isn't the half days on isn't that common planning time on Tuesdays? Is that but it's, you, you ma it's maxed out with other things? Is that what happens? N no, the common planning time. Uh, what's nice about the common planning time on Tuesday is that it, it it is a release for for teachers to get together and to you know we we can't contractually say what happens during that time, but providing that time for teachers at the same time is is very helpful. So it's not, it's not so much the Tuesdays, it's more in the schedule, in an elementary school schedule, when you're trying to bring in a special educator or bring in somebody else who's an interventionist maybe who's working with kids, um, or you're trying to um, line up the, the, the common planning blocks, it, it's hard to do that when um, number one we have diff art art is different yeah um, which you know that's something internally we're, we're trying to think about but the specialists are some of them are <laughs> are coming in in their car and they don't you don't even see them whiz by the, the front off they you don't even check in um, to get to teach the classes particularly at Pierce this year um, because it is a smaller school mm. uh, it, 
uh, Pierce was used a little bit as the kind of fill-in when you look at that matrix. You know, we, we call it Sudoku from not a good place. <laughs> uh, it's hard. It's hard to yeah. fit in all of those pieces. And so what we're finding is, is when you when you can't have that common planning time within within the building, if you don't build in those blocks, then and you've got teachers meeting, like let's say fourth grade is meeting all at a, at a different time, the interventionists can't get in mm -hmm. because yeah. you know they might take their fourth grade slot, and then when another fourth grade comes back, they're on to third grade. So trying to to build a schedule where we're able to get RTI reading in, um, math all at a different time so interventionists can go in, um, you know, maybe a science block that's all together um, across the, the grade level so that teachers can teach different FOSS units. So it's more than just the, co the common planning time is important, yes, but with it's kind of a, a, an incidental from planning in all of those places where we have consistency for the, for the specialists, the learning specialists to get in. And then of course, then they have a common planning block where they can meet with all those specialists that are in the building at that time. So it, it, it's, it's, it's sort of a, a catch-22 with the, with the Tuesday, it's great PD. I mean, they're, 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 they're getting that time with their, but it's not the same as creating it during the school day. Got it. Got that it. Okay. Sense. Got in it. other words, if if the playing time isn't common, math can't be common. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Literacy can't be common. Right. Science can't be common. Mm -hmm. And so, as specialists are trying to get into help a certain grade level, they're unable to do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Got it. Now, one last question. I'll stop. Yeah. No, <clears throat> so there's a note here that says it says, thank you for that. Uh, says here, stop curriculum ads. It is crushing people. <laughs> oh, so you got our note. Enough you stuff. got our note. I got the note. Yeah. <laughs> so how could you were I not, not supposed to have our notes. How could I not pass up on, on that <laughs> comment? <laughs> what's going on? So what's, oh, is that yours? Did I you don't write remember that? saying it like that. One of the, it was <laughs> it's a, oh, I I've had, this. I've had notes from our calls. meeting. I've had things go out with really, it's right don't believe what I've said. <laughs> So I know, I know. <laughs> just to like do the the, um, the positivity sandwich here, the curriculum that we use is the best. Yeah, we use absolutely. very high quality curriculum, and those experiences are wonderful. However, mm -hmm. since mm -hmm. we've seen standards change, as and as we've tried to um, revise, reinvent, and implement new curriculum, mm -hmm. we've seen some pretty aggressive implementation plans. Mm -hmm. So if we look at um, first grade this year there or even last year we saw a new science curriculum come in they have a new math curriculum coming in new units of study for writing that have rolled in uh, we're rolling in new reading and a new approach to readers workshop to new curriculum attached to that they're dense and high quality we're asking more of the social emotional curriculum than we've asked in the past that's the experience that's starting to happen in second grade we're geared up for that to happen now in third and fourth Third, second and third next year in terms of math um, and, and at the same time we have really wonderful new social studies units coming in interdisciplinary mm -hmm. units okay. it's a lot and one of the things that we've talked about is and I, I think we're really representing our teachers on this too we want to focus on what we have and get mm -hmm. the, to the um, highest quality mm -hmm. that we can with our teams Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah, thank you. Principal does mean principal teacher, I'm, I would think. Of. Right, right? Yeah, okay. Absolutely. All right. Thanks for that. Thanks. I just, I couldn't resist asking about that. Right <laughs> and Where did you have that? Mr. Mr. Slickman. He said that to me about halfway through. He goes, do they have the one with the yeah, That's, yeah. Oh, I haven't read it. I'll be, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm reminded on one of the first tasks of selectmen in New England towns was to regulate the town common. And the reason for this is that a, a town common is capable of feeding only so many sheep. And if you try to put too many sheep on the common, they will all wither and die so that you need to restrict the number of sheep you have on the common and it can be painful. And this is one of those conversations where it sounds like we're trying to crowd too many sheep on the common. Uh, there is a limit to the capacity of any teaching staff or school system to adopt new initiatives. And I think that that's a, a warning flag for all of us and one that I'm aware of in my day job. Um, and I appreciate the fact that that comment made it in here. Um, the uh, teachers have to know that we respect the work that they do and that in order to do things well we have to 
limit the number of new initiatives. The unfortunate thing is over the past few years, we've been buried under a lot of initiatives that have been uh, placed upon us by the state. So we haven't been able to do a lot of the things we really want to do because the state is mandating so much of it. Um, the other thing that I would say is that I'm really heartened to hear what you're saying in that even though it, it, it's a stressful time in that one of the questions I've always asked is who's caring for the caregivers and that um, I, when, when we adopted the new state evaluation system, I know the amount of work that uh, goes along with that because I've had to evaluate teachers and uh, to do it well and to do it meaningfully requires a lot of time and a lot of thought and a lot of discussion. It's not a paper process. It's a building a relationship process. And to build a relationship with too many teachers just defeats the whole purpose of the evaluation system where you're not having a daily conversation about teaching and learning and practice. Um, you have always come in here and said we need assistant principals but you know we're going to be altruistic and say yeah we need them but we'd rather you staff something else or give the money to someplace else and the fact that you're coming in here and saying we can't say that anymore we need the support I think is uh, I, I think is admirable and I'm glad to hear you making the ask even though it's a different year to deliver that ask and I will substitute I won't ask my usual question uh, because I know that we've skirted around it and I know that uh, I will be expecting the superintendent to be thoughtful about that uh, going forward though any advice you'd have in terms of things we're doing and spending money on that we really shouldn't be doing is, isn't, isn't a bad thing either. Um, I, I've got to say that the, the social workers are very important. I couldn't have run a building without one. Um, uh, the CPT, I understand the scheduling and why you need to go and have sufficient uh, FTEs of specialists in order to align your curriculum within the grade level and to foster common planning and cross-classroom collaboration and kids moving between classrooms. This is, this is all good practice. And, um, you know, school committees, when they start talking about adding administrative positions are always getting kicked around. And when, you're, when it's time to make cuts, uh, the mantra usually is to cut administrators so that you protect the classroom. And, it, it, it's difficult uh, to talk about this on one level, but the other thing is that, that we all have to be cognizant of is that leadership matters. And if you're looking at a strong building, you've got a strong, capable leader. If you've got a building that's in trouble, it's often because you have the wrong leader in that building. Even though they're a capable leader, they're just in the wrong spot. And we have an obligation to ourselves to not only support the leaders we have, but to develop leaders for the future. And uh, having uh, positions that lead to the principalship, such as an assistant principal's position, is partially a professional development opportunity for us to work people into a leadership position where they're supported and trained and mentored and ready to take a building if, they, if we need them. So there are very strong cogent arguments for what you're asking for and I've walked through buildings I've seen what principals do I've seen what great principals do I see the great work that's going on in our buildings and frankly given the staffing levels that we're providing you I don't know how you do it so um, I've, I've got to say thank you thank you for being frank and honest with us and uh, thank you for the work you're doing um, I know that I'll carry this in my heart through the budget process and we'll, we'll try to work something out that we can make some of these improvements uh, as we look through uh, what we have to do to find money from elsewhere in the budget so that we can support your work. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks. Thank you very much for coming. Um, we really, I, yeah, I don't have anything to add, but um, thank you. Uh, we really appreciate hearing from you.
Okay. Thank you for the work that you do. Can I? Can I, I was oh, gonna, I'm sorry. Wait, I was wait. just going to say, real, it's, just, it's another <laughs> sorry comment. Sorry about that. It's not I'm sorry. I, did, I didn't see your hand. Like, okay. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't see it. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> so it, it's, even though I'm saying we don't have any money or anything, we really do appreciate all the work that you're doing to, yeah. to, to compile what you need. Mm -hmm. And we are taking that and we're communicating mm -hmm. that out. We did that last year. Yes. And it was mm -hmm. really favorably received. Mm -hmm. And we're hoping to build the case over the years for what the schools really need mm -hmm. um, yeah. when there's a redial mm -hmm. or more money coming from the state and things like that and and this is part of the process no matter how much of it we're able to fund or not no matter how much we want to fund it yep. so that's mm -hmm. all absolutely absolutely thank you thanks thanks <laughs> Uh, so the next on the agenda, AEA is going to um, give a uh, presentation twice, once focusing on elementary school needs, um, and then uh, we'll see them again next week focusing on um, uh, middle and, and, and high school needs. So I am Liz Higgins. I teach first grade at the Bishop School, and I thank you for letting me come to be the voice of my elementary colleagues. Um, I just wanted to let you know what our process was. Um, each of the schools met and compiled the list for next year's priorities and then submitted them to me. And it was very evident that there was common themes at all seven of the schools. Um, class size we have come to realize it's here to stay, the large class sizes. Um, so we're not actually asking for additional classrooms because we also know there's no space. So um, our top priority would be to add teacher teaching assistants. Um, and specifically, the <coughs> kindergarten teachers um, are asking for full-time teacher's assistants and Basically, every grade level sharing one TA would be um, the next greatest request. The class sizes, uh, the norm is 25 now in the elementary uh, schools. And the children are far more needy, whether it be emotionally needy or educationally needy. And it's really making each day a challenge to meet the different needs when there's one adult with 25 children um, and being able to differentiate and meet the needs of you know the advanced students and support the more needy students is more and more challenging um, so we specifically have on our list full-time TAs for kindergarten grade level TAs and more teaching assistants for uh, to service the identified uh, IEP students. Um, and with very few TAs in a school, they are often pulled mm -hmm. because of yet another problem we have with substitutes. So they're asked to cover a class and unable to service the children that they're scheduled to see on any given day. Um, we specifically are mentioning also the quality of the TAs um, we're, and adding quality substitutes to the list. It's very often that someone puts in for a substitute in advance, maybe for a personal day, and the position is filled, and then it's kicked back because an opportunity arises in a system where the daily pay is higher. So that is one of the biggest reasons that TAs are being pulled out of classrooms and not able to service the kids. Um, we also have BCBA support increase as a request for next year. Um, it sounds like there's a lot of common thread between what the principals are asking for and, and the teachers. Mm -hmm. um, we need more help. We need more help with the special ed children, we need more help with the regular ed children, we need um, help with kids in crisis. Um, and so our, our greatest request for next year would be additional staff. We also have on the list um, 
at every elementary school that's faced with having double classes for phys ed. It is such a challenge and it's a safety issue. With 56 year olds running around with two teachers, yes, the amount of injuries and nurse visits on those double class days have increased greatly. Um, just collisions, it's nothing intentional, it's all accidental. Um, the other bigger piece to our request is technology. Currently at the elementary level, and it differs a little bit from school to school, but there's a, for example, a cart of iPads with 25 iPads to be shared among three classes. Because of the wonderful block scheduling, when one class is teaching reading, all three, te all three classes are teaching reading. So it's kind of a, you know, you take this day, you take that day. And um, the upper grades really are feeling it the most. Um, a need for uh, more technology. And it varies from school to school. There's certain schools who feel strongly that each child having their own Chromebook would be best for their school, and other schools are asking for each <coughs> class having the, uh, a set of iPads um, for research, for better keyboarding, for test preparation. All of those things would improve if they had access to, to consistent technology. Um, and then there's some, some smaller um, wishes for next year. The FOSS kits are shared among grade levels. So FOSS is the science curriculum, which is wonderful. And uh, each <laughs> school has a grade level kit, and then ha it has to be shared. So we're all teaching the same concept at the same time, but we don't have our own supplies. So we're sharing the teacher's manual. We're sharing the, the books for the children. We're sharing the supplies to you know, create the sound gong when we're you know, 25 flashlights when we're doing our light mm -hmm. unit. And so everyone's having to uh, scramble and it would be very helpful for every classroom to have their own kit to work with. Um, keyboarding curriculum was a request from the th third grade through fifth grade teachers and um, some outside professional development co um, consultants. Um, so that's more staff. Okay. <laughs> uh, questions, comments, Mr. Hainer. I was just wondering, is there any thought of bring your own device at the elementary level? Uh, directed to Ms. Uh, could we have <laughs> bring your own device? Um, I think it's a lot harder for the elementary teacher to have multiple different kinds of devices in the classroom. Um, and uh, I do know that we are planning on meeting with um, whomever would like to weigh in on what our uh, device strategy will be at, at the middle and at elementary, middle, and high school. I'm just in the spring, yeah. Trying to be creative of finding a way of. Totally get that. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Harden. Um, so the one big difference between what you guys are looking for and the principals are looking for is the assistant principal position. And I know you weren't aware that they might be asking for that. But, um, you know, that would probably trump most of the stuff that's on your list. Can you give some reaction to that? Is it is it something that you're your teachers are frustrated uh, with not having enough support from a principal or what is I'm your happy reaction? I'm happy to speak on that I, I was aware that that was going to be their greatest request and I would support it wholeheartedly and I believe that all elementary teachers would also support um, having more support from the from a principal or an assistant principal um, with you know starting with observations I think that there's a lot more that could go on to support us and our growing as educators, having more time, more visits um, for observations and follow-up. Because at, at, at this time, we have a pre-meeting and a post-meeting, and it's, it's not enough time. It really isn't, so. Okay, thanks. Mr. Slickman. I, I'm, the one thing that I'm really pleased about is 
how parallel your your list is to the principals. I think right. that that indicates a tremendous amount of collaboration in our buildings. And I just want to say it's a very positive sign, and I'm glad to hear that. Dr. Um I'm wondering, this is actually more for the administration, if there's any way we can get some numbers on how often the TAs are pulled mm -hmm. to act as subs and, and things like that. Not, not right now, but, mm -hmm. but just. So, so we are currently um, collecting that data. Okay because it is such a problem. Yeah. Um, so each teacher is asked to keep a log mm -hmm. of how often um, IEP min minutes are not being met because the TA isn't there to provide the service. So it's the TA. And it's a substantial issue it's, at all the schools. It's not just regular classroom TAs, but also TAs who are one-to-one -one for IAPs? Yes. OK. Yeah. So it might be helpful actually to remind the public that we have a great need for substitutes. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Yeah. Did you want to speak? Do, oh, sorry. No. Yeah. Um, I think there, you, we need to make a distinction between a one-to-one -one where a student specifically has it in an IEP and when a student's in a supported classroom. But that would, again, as Mike Remy was discussing, when you start to get to that level of detail, you start to identify individuals. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, Mr. Hainer. Uh, the issue with uh, substitutes, it comes down to one thing, it's money. Mm -hmm. right. we, can, we are not able to compete with the higher level quality substitute. Mm -hmm. When he or she decides to come here, there's no other job available, and as soon as another job becomes available, okay. they're gonna desert us. We have to look to balance between taking TAs out and, and raising that, it, it's, I don't mean to oversimplify it, it costs money, but to be competitive in this area for substitutes. We are, I don't think we're at the bottom, but we are very close to competing with the bottom in the area. We're like, I, I, yeah. yeah. I think 85 is the next one up from us. I think it goes to 90 and the rest are over 100 per day and in the area. And, and we're, we are now at 75? Yeah, 75. Mm -hmm. it's and it, I, I remember asking last year if we were to increase it by five dollars, that you you guesstimated it would be about thirty thousand. Does that does that seem right? That was yeah, top my okay. Head. Sorry. I, I rem that was actually a, a query that I gave la that I asked for last year, and I think yeah. that was the number. So just to sort of see what mm. kinds of things we're it, looking at. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be very frank with you because I subbed an awful lot. Concord is I think at about 110, 120 right now. We won't even talk Cambridge. Cambridge is but. Right. The bottom line is that money equates to the quality of substitutes and the consistency of those quality substitutes coming to your district. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it speak to the it teachers. When you get a good quality substitute, you want that substitute to come back and, and work with you. Uh, poor Rob, I'm sure he has enough about the, the substitutes they don't want to come back. <laughs> yeah, you're nice. Mr. Mr. Yeah. yeah, this is truly a marketplace effect. Uh, and because substitutes are hired on a daily basis, uh, you know, the market is in play every day. So my question would be, have we done a, a Town Manager 12 analysis on subpay? I don't think we've done one recently, but we are, um, uh, you know, thinking about the Town Manager 12, I think we're probably on, we are definitely on the lower end. There might be one or two districts in the Town Manager 12 that are lower than us, mm -hmm. um, but most are well above. Um, it, it would so. be helpful to look at those numbers because this discussion just keeps coming up every yeah. year. Uh, and uh, it, it resonates that uh, any time we're not filling a substitute position, we're having a ripple effect within the classroom. Mm -hmm. Dr. Wright? Well, I, I think it's important. I think we should do that, mm -hmm. looking at the time manager 12, just for that information because mm -hmm. that is our sort of our baseline look mm -hmm. at things. Mm -hmm. I think given that people live in a certain area, oh, right. we really need to look at what's going on around us. Oh, and, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah, and we're, we're on two sides, Lexington and Cambridge. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I do think that this is something that we really need to look at because mm -hmm. it, it actually is one of the things that adds to principal pressure every morning. Every morning, the first thing they're doing is looking at who's out and then how are they going to manage Mm -hmm. to cover everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the whole day is spent, the morning is spent trying to figure that out. Yeah. Um, 
So that would release some pressure mm -hmm. if we could have a more um, consistent supply. But having said this, mm -hmm. I know that Rob has talked with other HR directors, mm -hmm. and while it is an issue what we're paying, and I think mm -hmm. we should go up, the pool of people, period, mm -hmm. is down. Mm -hmm. A lot yeah. of districts are having trouble finding mm -hmm. subs. So we've been trying to think of some creative way of, we, at one point, if you remember a couple years ago, we put in a building sub mm -hmm. at each elementary. Mm -hmm. Maybe we need to look at that again and have two building subs or have something proportional. Um, mm -hmm. uh, when we were doing PD, a year ago, we did is we, we had a, a, a team of subs so that there could be rotation. Because the other thing that happens in elementary schools is that there are IP meetings, and there's other meetings that go on that have to be covered. Mm -hmm. And so if we were to even have a team, um, we could mm -hmm. schedule the IEP meetings based on when the team was in that school. So we're mm -hmm. thinking of these mm -hmm. kinds of things right now. Yeah. I mean, the data, you know, the, having the data, having the numbers, especially uh, on compensation, uh, is sort of important for us to make an informed decision. But if you take that $75 and multiply it by 180 school days, you get $13,500. And I, I don't think you're going to hire anyone. I think McDonald's pays more, yeah. I, I just found out the average subs pay on a yearly basis in the state of Massachusetts is 20000 mm -hmm. Thank you to, for putting that into perspective. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. Thielman. So I guess the question I have is, are, are, do we, is there an issue, do we have data on the amount of times that uh, principals have not been able to get any subs and there's, and there's uh, well, It's yeah. very rare that a building will have no subs on a particular day. The issue isn't no subs the issue is not enough subs to cover mm -hmm. every teacher that's mm -hmm. out so th there's multiple issues um so you're combining classes that was, that's, mm -hmm. that's, excuse me you're combining classes under one sub is that what's or the principal's jumping in and teaching the class no. usually they're pulling tas mm -hmm. but the, yeah, the, pulling the, what i'm saying is that there's usually when um these issues come up i mean we have subs in the district that are daily subs that come and take jobs in different schools mm -hmm very frequently um, typically what's happening is um, either there are grade level professional developments going on on some days when whole grade or maybe not whole grades but mm -hmm. a number of teachers in a grade level are pulled mm -hmm. for professional development there are some days when teachers are pulled for mentoring either the, the teachers being mentored are going to watch their mentor teachers or the mentor teachers are going to watch the teachers they are mentoring and they were trying to get subs. Um, obviously, we offer you know, our contract mm -hmm. gives teachers personal days, of, and usually they schedule those in advance and get subs in advance. The challenge really um, comes when people get sick mm -hmm. or their kids get sick, and it, those are usually not scheduled things um, unless they have a scheduled doctor's appointment or surgery or something. But typically, the sickness is going around it's hard to get last minute subs. Mm -hmm. It's hard to get subs for tomorrow morning or the morning of, um, because people already have their schedule for the day. Um, the subs themselves sometimes get sick and can't come in and, and, and take the position. So there's, a, there's multiple factors that go into the issues that we have. Um, with the number of, if it was just if we didn't do any professional development, which I, I'm not advocating, and mm -hmm. just you know, teachers were just in the building and and they were only out when they got sick, and um, we'd have less of an issue. But if and if no one got sick ever, that would be less of an issue as well. But people get sick, and people and we want teachers to have professional development and mentoring and all the things that we do. And you're, I've talked to other HR directors. Everyone, no matter what they're paying, is having an issue getting enough subs in their district right now. And it's a combination of the job market right now is good overall. Yeah. There's low unemployment. People are not looking for work. We're at a good point right now, which, um, which I've um, communicated with all the principals this week, that a lot of teacher student teachers are ending their student teaching. They're finishing their... Uh, some of them are finishing their studies and degree programs right now and have a gap where they are available to sub and we I've had I've met with some of those 
those people this week and they're going to be added to our sub list and hopefully they will go on to our sub list um, in the spring. They are also the teachers who are getting licensed and will be um, prime candidates for long-term substitute positions either in Arlington or in another district or in openings that could come up mid-year. So we also stand the chance of losing some of those people when other longer-term assignments come up. Thank you. I, you know, I'm struck by that every store I go into now has a sign mm -hmm. asking help wanted, mm -hmm. yes. which was certainly not the case in the state several years ago. Yeah. Um, so it, I, I, it is, it is, it's sort of a good problem to have as a state level that we have, you know, greater employment, but it's it's a tough thing to have. Yeah. Um, okay. So now, sorry, I don't have my. Oh, thank you very much, Ms. So, Higgins. Uh, yeah, Dr. Okay. Buddy. Thank, no, nothing. Yes. I was just going to say thank you, Liz. Oh, you're mm -hmm. You know, one last thing I did want to say, you know, mm -hmm. to end on a positive note. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been in the system for 24 years, and there have been some amazingly wonderful things that you've added throughout my career. Mm -hmm. Most recently, the curriculum that's provided is top notch. Mm -hmm. It's really, really good stuff. And, um, you know, we just want to get that to the children in the in the best way, and having having some more support in our teaching. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Great, Thanks. thank you for for coming here. Uh, monthly financial report. Good evening. Um, the the story for the monthly reports is out of district special ed tuition, mm -hmm. and as I hinted or warned last time it was worse than it was last month but that's not entirely unexpected we knew there were some things outstanding and pending and we didn't want to put hard numbers out there until we locked some things down mm -hmm. but um, that's the story mm -hmm. if we stay where we're at um, we do have <coughs> enough reserves I think with one thing or another to mm -hmm. finish the year okay mm -hmm. um, we'll finish this year okay mm -hmm. it's next year um, and and what that's going to mean given our limited <coughs> revenues going into next year we have to cover mm -hmm. the shortfall as we go into the next budget and it is a significant one so questions yes <coughs> mr. Hainer I get several tonight I, I, I'm on the budget tracking report uh -huh. and item eight one two one five Eight, one, two, one, five. Yes. So we used to book everything to temporary salary and wages professional. This is the student. This, these are the no, stipends. This administrative, stipends student. administrative. These are the stipends. stipends that we're trying to tease out the expenses, and we've lumped them into different categories. The budget all resides under temporary salary and wages professional or other. And you'll notice that there's a, a great, we're projecting a great big positive balance. Okay. And that's the offset to those. It'll offset that 42. Correct. Thank you. Wait, you're so all those expenses used to live in that one line. The reason, the Student reason activity I, stipends, is that? Okay, no, no. The, the reason I'm asking okay. was there was nothing budgeted. Correct. It's now showing up. Correct. You, but it is covered. Correct. That's the big part for yeah, me. No, the budget, the budget's sitting in one place, but we're okay. teasing out the expenses right Fine. now. Fine. And so next year, we, we'll there should be a, budget, budget a budgeted item. Thank you. Uh, item 81318, uh, teacher moving allowance. Yep, we never budget enough for that. Well, <laughs> who's moved? I thought all the moving was done. Stratton. I thought that was done in last year's budget. I thought we had that in last year's budget. So this represents the strat. Well, and there's always relocation every year. I understand that, but 23,000 is that's shouldn't be, a, if that's Stratton, it, it's appropriate. If, if it's just. It's Stratton and other things. Stratton. Okay. Uh, Stratton packed up in no I understand that and I then they had to unpack I was under the impression this happened in June after school got out and it was in last year's budget that it is fine up. that right. makes sense yeah yeah um, <laughs> yeah 81320 81320 oh. oh. I'm so, yeah skill stipend huh this is part of the ongoing campaign to clean up all the stipends and to to make them behave okay and we're not all the way there yet Okay, um, 81413. 81413. Longevity yes. teacher. Yes, this, uh, this is a stunner, and I need to sit down. I, to me, this is something we should know on day should. one. We should. The problem is, is that there's no really good way to track when the teachers roll on. We know in Munis when the teachers are rolling on, but I didn't catch it in the budget, and we had a big influx this year. So this one caught me short. So, okay, so going forward, it'll be... We can catch that up. We, it shouldn't be nebulous. It should be known out front. It, 
The problem is, is when they roll on and when they roll up. What do you mean? It's Doesn't not, it happen it's to not be, steady. It, 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 I, don't, I don't have a granulated enough to capture it as well as I should. I've focused on the salaries. I get the salary spot on. Okay. But the longevity doesn't go up every year the way a salary does. Right. I understand that. It, but it kicks in. But it should be predictable. It should be predictable, and I should have predicted contract. it. Okay, fine. So that's there. And um, by and large, longevity has been quite steady. Yes. Because right. so many roll off the top and so many roll in, but we seem to have a bubble right now. But if I was entitled to it as a teacher, it's going to happen on a predictable mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. years. That's what, that's where I was coming from. Uh, line item 8513, 85, okay, hold on, hold on, let me get there. 85103. Yeah, could you just tell me what's going on in that line? Yes, the, the, two, the $250,000 is actually going to go to the one-time reserves we're going to use. So you see that I'm, I'm going to be transferring $250,000 worth of expenses out of that line but it, and into the reserve funding that was part of our budget. <clears throat> okay, according to this, it was budgeted at 306. Mm -hmm. We've incumbent 431. No, we've spent 431. Spent 430. Yeah. Well, yes, it's spent to, to date. Yeah. Yes. And then we're. In and then we've encumbered 30000 And I'm going to move $250,000 of those expenses into a revolving account where we had reserves from a prior year. And if you'll recall our funding sheet from the FY17 budget, we discussed that in length when we did the budget last year. So I have yet to move those expenses. So I'm showing it as a move that's uh, about to happen. Okay. So are we over budget on that or? Well, if you counted the 306 plus the 250, but right. the 250 is budgeted elsewhere. So I just need to move the expenses over to that 250. So we won't be over budget. Yeah. Okay. okay. Plus the instructional materials and textbooks mm -hmm. is fungible. Yeah. You know, things that used to be a textbook are now a little more ambiguous. Right. And so I think, I really do think about textbooks 85106 and instructional materials 85103 as interchangeable. Mm -hmm. So if it's the sum of those budgets and the sum of those expenses. And with that and the 250 from reserve, we're fine. Mm -hmm. And the last one is the last line item on this, 88550, computer equipment. Mm -hmm. We budgeted 20000 and we're spending a lot more. What yes. happened there? Well, we needed, to get, we needed to get more Chromebooks in for the uh, fourth and fifth grade testing. Mm -hmm. And this wasn't predictable from last year for the budget. That's one of the... Well, because of the iPad and the fact that the park didn't run on the certain later versions of the iPad, we thought we had enough hardware, but then the testing needs skunked us. So, and so we had to scramble. Are we adapting for this year on yes. this? Mm -hmm. Yes. So we're going to... And this, the budget item is going to be higher this year? Predictably well, higher? Well, I don't think we're going to need to do this year over year. I mean, this was sort of a catch-up year. But there's... Period. Yeah. Normally, if we had known ahead of time that Park would not run on an iPad, I, I understand that. No, part. no, no. We would have used part of the 400k right. that we get from capital. No, I understand so that I'm, part. I'm my my for concern that. is this uh, this hardware is not forever, so we're going to have right, this item is going to be. But then it'll get folded into the long range capital replacement plan. See, we were replacing. Going forward, we're going to always look at the capital to to deal with a big chunk of this. As yeah, much as we as can well. get out of them. Okay. <laughs> and Thank if they continue to be as generous as they've been. Thank you. Dr. Allison Effie. I had a question about the tech stuff. So I understand we were taken by surprise about the iPad, that the iPads that we have don't work <coughs> in the park. Was that a failure on DESE to communicate to everybody? Mm -hmm. No, or? it's a failure on the fact that the iPads are five years old. Okay, so we saw iPads and we had iPads and so we thought it was okay, but actually the iPads that we have were too old to... Right, I don't think anybody anticipated the level of horsepower that was going to be necessary for the video that's necessary in the park. So they, it can run, but they would often get stuck. They would have to be restarted. It was not a good testing environment for students. So okay. can you absolutely positively not do it? No, the answer to that question is no. You you can, but you have lots of technical issues, and that's not a good testing environment for okay. students. So, but that I don't think was communicated well by 
I mean, well, was I don't Desi know that. Yeah, I don't know that anybody knew, that they, right? Yeah, that, that's because I'm saying we were talk, we were talking about this when we mm -hmm. were mm -hmm. making the purchase yep. originally, and we yeah. thought that they yep. would work for testing. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so, and the new ones do nice job, but the right. But I'm saying even when we when we started this whole thing, we mm -hmm. this question was asked. Yes, it was. And the answer was that they would work for testing. Yes. And it sounds like the words that we, I mean, the information we were getting from the top was not really adequate for making the technological purchasing decisions that we needed to make. Right. I, right. I would agree with that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Sealman, first. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so, you know, we're, we got five months of the fiscal year done. There's seven months left. Are you able to make some projections on where do you think we'll be on June 30th in terms of if if we hold steady on our out-of-district placements, if they don't take a nasty turn in the spring. They're getting worse than they are currently. Correct. Okay. If they don't get worse, yep. I think we'll be okay. Okay, meaning a break-even budget. We'll, we'll, have to absorb our out of, we'll have to absorb our SPED reserves from okay. tuition in. We'll have to absorb our SPED reserves from town hall. But I think we'll be okay. But after using the SPED reserves, you project that we'll be? At this point, I feel like we'll be okay, but that's subject to the usual disasters and yep. footnotes. But, you know, assuming we don't have another major elevator blowout, yeah. we don't have, you know, three move-ins in February, all needing residential placement, you know, th those kind of horror things that wake me up in the middle of the night. Assuming none of that happens, I think we'll be okay. Thank you very much. Mr. Carton. Uh, yes, yeah, sorry, just going back to the computer stuff. Um, have we updated our... our sort of uh, information, information technology plan as a result of now having Chromebooks in the elementary school. I mean, my kids are saying, suddenly they're seeing Chromebooks and they're, they're using them so they can take the tests on them, but the teachers don't really know what to do with them. So is, that, is it now a plan to have Chromebooks instead of iPads or are we adapting that or what are we doing? Well, as I said earlier, <coughs> um, I wanna meet with the staff just to have, let them have a responsible uh, opportunity to weigh in on what the direction will be that we'll go with the elementary schools. Um, if I had a crystal ball, I said that we'd probably end up with a combination of both devices. And we ran professional development on both devices this summer for teachers, and we're continuing to do that. We have some um, mini courses that will be starting right after the first of the year. And one of the things they're going to be focusing on is, is, again, the use of both devices in the classroom and how you would translate from one device to another. Great. Thanks. I just want to say we have a curriculum technology update coming for the next meeting. Yeah, so that will also give more information. Yes, Mr. Hainer. Uh, just a thought. Uh, could we, the iPads that don't work for the testing, could we move those to the, gr the grades that don't do the testing? And uh, absolutely, that is what we do. We don't throw anything away. <laughs> Thank you. Even five years old. <laughs> Mr. Slickman. Um, I, one of the things that disturbed me uh, this week was that the governor went and mm. did some 9C cuts. Mm. Uh, basically, he used this as a tool to uh, override the veto overrides by the legislature. So he, he made vetoes of many programs that he, he didn't want to fund. The legislature used their authority to fund them, and now the governor comes along and whacks them with the 9C, uh, which I don't think is sporting, to say the least. Are, do we have anything on our plate that is impacted by the 9C? Not that I've seen so far, but we only have uh, um, Circuit Breaker is only funded at 70 percent so mm -hmm. far. And if, if the governor leans hard on the cuts, I would expect that it will not go up from the 70%. Mm -hmm. In a normal year, it often does go up. Mm -hmm. They budget it conservatively, and then in the fourth quarter, they take it up to whatever they can afford. Mm -hmm. So I would, it, the last time there were 9C cuts, that's exactly what happened. They made cuts to circuit breaker, and it meant that we got the lower number that they projected at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. So by staying low, I think we're safe on the circuit breaker. Mm -hmm. Add one add one point to that is we, we, we became in an unfortunate position a couple of years ago that we are one year out. So it used to be that when we, there was a reduction in mm -hmm. circuit breaker or some big surprise, mm -hmm. it was a real problem because we had to make cuts in order to adjust to that. We are no longer in that spot. Mm -hmm. We are budgeting, mm -hmm. so the, the, that, sh that would happen next year. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it would have an impact in the following year, for sure, but at least it wouldn't uh, destabilize us in this year. And, and, and actually, that's one of our concerns, is we, we're going to be very careful following the budget the rest of the year, and we, we will probably 
with most certainty have to use the reserves we put in the stabilization account because we do not want to break th this um, budgeting uh, protocol. Mm -hmm. It's just too dangerous, dangerous and out years to have that happen. So we're going to do everything we can not to have that happen this year. Mm -hmm. So are we going to be fine? We always have the circuit breaker money, but we don't want to touch it. Yeah, right. <coughs> I just want to know if we need to be, how much squawking we need to do. Mm -hmm. uh, I talked to, uh, to Representative Garbley last night briefly about this, and a lot of them for Arlington were earmarks, mm -hmm. but the children's room was one of the ones that did mm -hmm. not get uh, reduced. So I don't know what all the earmarks were. He was going to get that information to me, but right now they're not, the governor's not talking about school budgets or even direct local aid at this point. So the um, last piece of yes. this is the revised budget transfer summary. Oh, right. We need to vote. Actually, can I ask just a couple of questions before? What? We can, what can we do now? We can do it now. Oh, uh, can I just ask a couple of questions just uh, about this? Um, so the sort of um, good news about things like the substitute teacher you know, those numbers look better than we anticipated. Is that just because we're not filling those positions? And that's the same thing I assume with the TAs. They're also looking, okay. Um, the other question I wanted to know is um, lab credits, would that be helpful in any way if we took more, took advantage of that? When we had the budget shortfall years mm -hmm. ago, the agreement we had, and we talked about it even the finance committee at the time, that we are not going to have that as part of a revenue stream. Mm -hmm. But is there some cushion there? Mm -hmm. If we really got stuck, there is some. Right, okay. But it is more in the background. It is not, I will never use that as a, as a revenue stream. Okay, okay. Uh, so the question is, do we need to take a vote now versus during the budget? Did no, we should do it now. I think we, we should just do it now. now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's so, do this now. So, so does but yes. Budget met. Um, mm -hmm on Monday and we um, were presented with the budget transfer and this takes care of the concern that was raised at the last meeting that we yeah. were charged with to figure out how to do the approval. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we voted to recommend to the full school committee to um, approve the fund, the um, fund transfer that um, Ms. Johnson has presented to you. Second. Right. And the, oh, we need a motion with a number. Yeah. Yeah. We need but, a number. Oh, need the a number, number is, oh. Yeah. The number's right there. Well, you got to state it in the motion. Oh. So, okay. So, Mr. Cardin, give us a motion. <laughs> <laughs> I move that the school committee approve the budget transfer amounts as presented by the CFO. With do we, do we need the number? the number? You need to state the number in the motion. The, the, no. It's on the, it's on the exhibit. You can, you can it's state on the exhibit the to the motion. As presented. Yes. Okay. Okay. Do you have a second? Second. A second by Mr. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I forgot to mention that uh, Ms. Starks is not with us today. I, I should have mentioned that at the very beginning of the meeting. <laughs> uh, she was, um, she, she's out sick, so I forgot to mention that. Um, we have another, uh, so are we done with budget? Is there, are there other questions about future other items? Okay. Uh, we have another uh, vote, vote to hold. Um, the school committee has talked about having a retreat to discuss um, a bunch of big picture things about how we evaluate um, the district goals and, and progress in the district goals with kind of evidence we want to see throughout the year and, um, and any, anything else really actually if there's something else that's that sort of big picture that we want to talk about um, please send it to me but we need to vote to have that meeting and I will finally get this date right because I know I've been mangling it um, the date is Saturday the uh, January 21st starting at 11 o'clock um, so can I have a motion so moved okay second <laughs> to have the meeting on, <laughs> to the, have 21st, meet on the 21st at, starting at 11, 11 o'clock so specifics and <laughs> okay. then by four and ending by uh, three, three I think Ooh. three I mean, this is outside. I, okay. It, doesn't, I, it may not I, take the We don't need to say that. I'd suggest, okay. I'd suggest no later we, than four. We're going to have lunch, so. Um, Should we specify the lunch bill and the thing? <laughs> <laughs> I 
much. Yeah, well, we can dictate the menu. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so if you have a special request for lunch, if you have a special request for an additional um, um, item for the agenda, um, that's sort of that big picture, um, I think it's valuable to meet informally. Um, mm -hmm. I think we get a lot done by this kind of informal meeting, so I think something we've talked about last time uh, when we had that that big meeting last time. Um, okay, so all those in favor of holding the retreat on the 21st of January, please signify aye. by saying aye. 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 Len, aye? Okay, unanimous. Did you get? Okay. 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 Great. Okay, superintendent's report. All right. Uh, a few things. Um, we've agreed that every meeting will give a little bit of an update maybe we should change it to once a month building yeah the building yeah. um mm -hmm. we have a lot going on but i think a, a particular um, note is what happened this last weekend at stratton with the break-in mm -hmm. it happened it happened again in, in in a breezeway door um one of the things that while those breezeway doors can appear to be locked they're the kind of uh, hardware where it, it's a, a metal pole that goes into a well mm -hmm. and a lot of uh, it's just clearly not a secure way it can be pried and, and pulled open and that's essentially what happened so um, the hard there's a lot of things that are, are going to be in place um, going forward one is the hardware has been changed mm -hmm. to a different kind of bolting still will have the crash bar uh, but it will be a different kind of bolting mechanism. There also, if you've been by Stratton, there is a big dumpster that's by the, for the contractor that's right, sort of right in front of the door. So it creates a sort of a shadowy place that if you're doing drive-bys by the police, you, you may not notice that. So that is going to be moved, but also there'll be lights there. Um, the contractor is going to put some cameras in, in a couple mm -hmm. of places. Um, so that we we don't have this what happened with the break-in is the same thing that happened last time and, and that was they got a hold of a fire extinguisher and sprayed the gym and the um, the cafeteria which we did not know until early Monday morning and uh, at six in the morning making a decision about whether we're gonna have school and uh, whether we could manage everything needed to be managed in order that there could be school and I, I want to take I want to compliment the staff and um, that they were as, as flexible and as cheerful as possible in doing this they really were quite amazing and I'm calling the director of uh, food services at 6 15 in the morning because this was key mm -hmm. can you handle lunch no problem she said and she did they just did a remarkable job of doing bag lunches so really kudos to the whole staff staff at Stratton for pulling together because we know that it would be quite a burden for parents at that, that you know they're not expecting it it's one thing you know snow's coming in it's another it's something like this but the, the key thing is also just making sure that we do more to secure um, this area and I think it's a lesson too in terms of future constructions that we really are going to have to invest in cameras and so forth we're fairly certain that this was um, certainly an older student high school or older because of the size of the shoes and we also have mm -hmm. the fire extinguisher with fingerprints and we, you know we'll, let me just leave it at that uh, at this point um, so it is it, it, that's where we are right now with that building and I won't I'll say some more about the new construction I, I just want to add uh, I heard from a parent this morning that uh, the librarian her sweater had been covered with the material and stuff like that she said it has never been that clean <laughs> uh, the, the, the cleaning company did such a phenomenal oh, nice. job <laughs> as well yes kudos to serve pro they gotcha. came in and they were amazing they cleaned the beams even if, if those of you know that Stratton gym there's a big ventilator area they went into it they cleaned everything out it isn't it hasn't been that it's mm. remarkably clean mm. I heard from some parents at Stratton who were concerned that they didn't receive timely information about what had happened and during this was during the day mm -hmm. on I guess it was Monday when it was found that there wasn't communication to the parents about the extent you know what happened what was 
why they were told that um, there wasn't going to be after school care because <coughs> there wasn't actually a place to hold it, but they weren't told what had happened in the school. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what their imaginations were running to, mm -hmm. but they were quite concerned just with the deficit of information and, and stuff. So I think in the future, if at least a quick email of, you know, this is the damage and, or, or this is the type so of happens. damage and we have to clean it up, that apparently didn't get out to parents until late, fairly later in the day. Um, I think it I, was I, that there had been vandalism. There had been vandalism, because I know that one out. I don't think it explained what the vandalism was. It did not. And in and fact, some people thought the vandalism had to do with graffiti um, that had happened. But the, yeah, the, the, I know that there was an, um, an alert, you know, an, a communication that went out because I organized it to go, to go out that early, early that morning. But um, it's true, I think, and, I, and, and this, is, this is a learn for the future that um, we need to assess more, more quickly whether after school can happen because that what that communication did go out a little bit too late right I, no I, I wasn't saying that I was I mean that may be true also mm -hmm. but my point was that parents weren't told what had happened I mean I, even mm -hmm. just an overview of there was fire extinguishers yeah. sprayed all around the school um, they didn't know anything mm -hmm. about what the damn you know they knew there was vandalism they knew nothing more than that and I don't know what they were worried there was, but um, I, they were I, worried. I, th mm -hmm. I think this has come up before that adding detail can often be helpful mm -hmm. because the lack of detail in incidents creates vivid imaginations in, in anxious parents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so more detail is just helpful, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well noted. Yeah. Okay. Um, I did tour um, the new construction um, that's going on as well, and it's coming along quite well. Uh, I talked with the project manager, and um, he has, sees no problem in the in the timetable whatsoever. Picked up a couple things that I've reflected back to them, so that the, that was good that I did it that time because there's things that sometimes, you know, you can see that other people might not see at the time. So we're going to work on a few things, but that that is going to along well. The Thompson timeline is going along well as also. Mm -hmm. um, I, I did get a um, note today from our OPM, our owner's project manager, saying that Thompson um, is going to have some Saturday construction and we're going to get a note out to the neighborhood in the next tomorrow mm -hmm. because in order to make up for some days that have been lost recently that um, they, they're going to need to do some Saturdays. What I don't know before I send the note out is exactly how many Saturdays. Mm -hmm. um, so that note will go out tomorrow. But they do not anticipate a problem with the timeline uh, either at this point. So I haven't been by there. What stage are we at? Um, we should be at the stage of, they were going to do the area near the playgrounds that was going to do some asphalting to create new pathways. Mm -hmm. That should have been done this week. I haven't been over to look myself, but um, then, the, then the site. Mm -hmm. We definitely want to get moving on the site uh, preparation before a deep freeze comes right. in. Mm -hmm. Exactly so. Mm -hmm. um, there were some delays initially for some permitting, but that's all been cleared up and we're going forward on that. In fact, not only are we going forward, but we're also thinking about furniture. So we've had some emails in the last days about how much furniture we need to order. So getting that going as well. So that's pretty much what's happening with Thompson. With Gibbs, likewise, a lot of planning, in fact, um, a lot of work that we've been doing, even internally, we spent a lot, um, Allison and Elmer and I spent a lot of time today, and, and, and Laura's been involved as well, is really looking at these um, floor plans just to make sure that we're getting, you know, the right sizing for all of our programs mm -hmm. and um, the adjacencies that we need and so forth. So we are moving quite well on that. It's staying on schedule. I, I, I think we need to, we do need to schedule um, 
an event where parents can come and, and uh, we certainly want teachers too as well to see where we are but we're not quite there so it may be more delayed than I thought our next meeting is going to be on Monday and I don't know if we're gonna be able to squeeze it in before the holidays so it may have to wait till after the holidays to do those um, so the comments but we have to mm -hmm. it'll have to be soon because yeah. um, we have to stay on our schedule yeah we have a very set schedule on that all right in high school the high school we've completed we've completed all the reports that we need to complete um, we continue we were we, we will be continuing to meet with MSBA regarding enrollment design numbers and that will be taking place this month one thing I, I've learned I think since we talked about it maybe not but um, that the January meeting has been canceled for MSBA so I talked with our liaisons and she said that um, you know you know assuming we get all this done which I'm I, I expect that we'll have no issue on that it'll probably be Feb mid February when the vote is uh, presented to the board for us to go into the feasibility study so mm -hmm. that's the earliest is mid February for that Great. she suggested March but I think that the <laughs> town manager and I have a strong preference for February moving forward our eligibility period act doesn't actually end until March so this will be a little bit an aggressive schedule relative to that module so we're doing well in, in all the buildings and um, one of the things we will be beginning to do is start planning committees um, at Audison with respect to the Gibbs. So the, the, we'll talk more about that at, at another time. So a couple of other things. Um, one is the enrollment. And you have the most recent chart, which our total number for the district is 5,524. So that's as of December 2nd. The interesting thing is that we just received um, this week, uh, maybe it was last week, end of last week, the, our certified copy of our October 1 numbers. And we will get that to you in Nova so you can see it. But it's exactly this number. Oh, really? So oh. in oh. the last two weeks, even though we've had, I we've know we've had, <laughs> I know we've had yeah. move-ins because yeah. I've had principals tell me we must have had an equal number of people leave because the number has stayed the same in the last two weeks. So. But still, we're over 5,500 students. Yep. And, um, and that represents what kind of increase from last year? I, th I'll, I have to do the numbers, but somewhere between four and four and a half percent. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it's up there. We received really great news um, this week. I don't know if you recall that we applied for a safe and supportive uh, schools grant. Well, we received it not only did we receive it we received the largest grant in the state and this money is to um, it's a planning grant and as you know one of our district goals is the plan is is uh, looking at all of the different ways we um, support students in our schools and looking at um, what we need to, to first of all identify where we are and then to do some planning about where we need to go. Mm -hmm. And this grant will also will help us in that, in addition to the money that AEF will also be providing us. So this, is, this was terrific news, and I want to um, thank all the people who were part of this, which was pretty much the, it was led by Julie Dunn, but the whole administrative team um, uh, pitched in to get mm -hmm. this grant written. So they're focused on social and emotional issues? Yes. That, okay. Yes, it's yeah. for the safe and supportive schools. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a planning grant. It's not an implementation grant. Mm -hmm. All right. So we, we expect to see, you know, you'll see the report of what gets accomplished, but then you also see what some of the actions are, which will um, certainly be part of our district goals mm -hmm. for next year. And then, um, what else was it? Last night, um, we participated uh, with Vision 2020 on a really interesting community talk. And um, uh, Mr. Cardin was there, and, and Dr. Seuss was there as well. And Vision 2020 is working with the school district to, to increase um, community conversations about 
our schools and the future of the schools in Arlington. And last night's questions was a follow-up to the movie that, we, that was shown um, a couple weeks ago, but the questions were really interesting, probing questions. It's, what does it mean to be educated? Mm -hmm. And then, how do you measure success? I think everyone had, it was a very exciting conversation about what does it mean to be educated, and there was a lot of commonality among the, the people there, and a, a focus on self-realization, self-awareness, there was just all, all of these things, foundational knowledge, I mean, I have a whole list of things here. What was interesting is when you got to the next question, which was, how do you measure it? <laughs> What is success and how do you measure it? And so that's where there's some challenge. And I think, I think people who were engaged in this conversation understood the challenge mm -hmm. that we all face in trying to measure how well, we, how well do we educate our children. Mm -hmm. Certainly the standards set by PARC and MCAS. But in our district, we measure success in so many ways, mm -hmm. in little ways, in large ways. and. Um, now, one example I gave last night is even just in the Tools of the Mind program, our students um, at this point in the year are making weekly goals. <coughs> They're writing the goals out on Monday, what they want to do by the end of the week, and then they see if they've accomplished their goals. So it's very tangible kind of work. We certainly do goals at um, all levels of the district, but we measure, we measure success in so many different ways in, uh, here in terms of the awards, attendance, we were talking about suspensions, the, the implementation of the curriculum, of course, standardized tests, of course, but that's, while that's important, we, we look at it in many, many ways. The performances our students do in art and music and uh, drama. So it's a, it's a conversation that's going to continue, and I hope other people will join in as we go through the year. And in the next, the next um, event is going to be in January in which um, we're going to talk, um, Laura and curriculum leaders are gonna talk about uh, some of the initiatives in the district. And um, I know, you two might wanna comment, but there's one more thing that's related to this I wanna to mention tonight, because you oh. both were there. Yeah. Oh, um, so I just wanna say that one of the things I think is really difficult for parents is who want something more, they just, they just want bigger, better, you know, more, um, is to really get a handle on what is happening in the district. And mm -hmm. so I think that that's why this January meeting will be especially mm -hmm. helpful to sort of figure out, okay, you know, I think this is what, what is, is great and, and we want more of that, you know, rather than I just want something more and, and not really having a, a clear idea of what they're pushing for. So um, I know I actually pushed to have them bring you in and have them bring other people in and, um, and I'm glad they're doing that and I think that's gonna really sort of shape the conversation mm -hmm. which, is, which has gone on. The conversation has been very interesting mm -hmm. um, so far but I think it, it, we just need to, it needs direction and I think that's gonna be really helpful. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep, I, it was a, a good group. There actually were, were people that weren't, weren't parents also, just community mm -hmm. members yeah. so it was an interesting mm -hmm. uh, uh, cross-section and the they had a group of facilitators which were very helpful in mm -hmm. focusing the groups on um, you know we split up into groups on on uh, sort of tackling some of these harder issues as far as measurement uh, as not just the more just the more amorphous we want you know more social emotional learning right. so uh, I, I think it was a good conversation yeah, okay. yeah. so one thing I appreciate that this is these forums have been going on, but as someone who fell into this category, I wonder what about the people who can't attend the meetings? Like last night I had a sick kid and I couldn't right, go. Right. How do they participate? You know, I'm, I'm concerned that this no. is supposed to be a community thing. And I'll you know. reach out to them and ask them, um, you know, there are, there are ways obviously for people to participate who aren't in the room. Um, it's gonna require work, so I'm not, you know, but let me reach out to them and see what their thoughts are on that issue, mm -hmm. yeah. While all of this is going on, is we, things don't happen necessarily sometimes sort of in a sequential linear way. Things happen a sort of an organic and a broader way. The uh, curriculum leaders and administration, we are um, 
doing a lot more professional development and networking around the issues of what it, what does the future of education look like and a lot of it has to do with personalization and that doesn't mean that um, that each student does whatever they want to do it's because it's in the it's in the context of common standards um, and people were talking a lot about common foundation knowledge but it's about how do we provide opportunities for access to the curriculum that that's individual to students learning uh, needs or interests how do we differentiate types of assignments so that you you, uh, you you're they're doing work on the same standard but they might be approaching it in different ways so it's choice assignments um, aligned and we've been we've been actually doing a lot of work around that there's there's pockets of in the district of more of that kind of work doing and and in recognition of that we've actually been invited to be one of the um, the 10 districts in the state to sort of take a lead on this mm -hmm. so we're we're being we're involving ourselves um, um, with a, a group um, with the Department of Education as well as Learn Launch, which is a, a group that has been um, partnering with the Department of Education around how we look at the direction of public schools, or schools in general, but particularly public schools in, in our Commonwealth. So it all has a synergy to it as we, we move forward. And we'll keep you up to date on some of the, some of the, um, the, the, um, activities we participate in. I just want to add, I think it's, it's hard to understand how, how much education has changed in the last five to 10 years, mm. and to really understand how much I suspect is going to change in the next five to 10 years. Right. And especially in Arlington, we're in this position where we really are in this, you know, we're, we're, we have a new high school, we have a new model at the middle school, so we really are in this great position to be thinking mm -hmm big picture about these kinds of questions. Right. And I'm, I'm, I'm so happy for the kind of conversations that are happening at the community level, at the curriculum, you know, educators level, you know, among teachers. I mean, I think there's a lot of really exciting um, conversations happening mm -hmm. in the district. We agree. So that's it. Yeah. Good, thanks. Um, okay, so we have, let's see, a s consent agenda. Um, all items listed with an asterisk are considered to be routine and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a member of the committee so requests, in which event the item will be considered <coughs> in its normal sequence. Approval of warrant, warrant 17075, total warrant amount uh, $537,329.75, dated uh, November 10th, 2016, and warrant number 17082, total warrant amount $617,834.48, dated November 22nd, 2016. Um, so a vote, is that? In the minutes? Yes, so moved. Minutes, well, so moved. Second. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Approval of minutes, uh, school committee regular minutes, November 10th, 2016. Okay, so, uh, so moved. moved to, so moved by Mr. Hainer, seconded by uh, Dr. Allison Ampe. All in favor? Say, say, say aye. 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 Okay, it's unanimous. Um, okay, so we have a first reading of policy. Does, right. Can we talk about uh, that? Yes. Yeah. Uh, teaching about alcohol, tobacco, and drugs. You have a copy. Uh, this is uh, recommended by MASC. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, decided as a group to, uh, to remove, and it's on your copy, in the uh, second to last paragraph, the third and fourth words. Uh, we that was, uh, we checked with council, council had no problem with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, any discussion comments? Uh, if I might just yeah. add one other thing. Down below it says cross references, and I apologize, I just checked it. J-I-C-H, drug and alcohol use by students. We do not have one as such. <laughs> okay. Uh, going forward, we, we will. Okay, so, so that is a reference so to. So I'm, I'm gonna, is just, when we go back, mm -hmm make that uh, adjustment to that. Okay, so this is only first read though, so right. we're, not, we're not voting on this right. yet. Yeah. Well, if there's any input from the rest of the committee, Mr. I'd be Thielman, happy to take it. I just wanna make, th this isn't changing anything we're doing now no. in terms of our practice. It's not this adding is, anything to no. the, okay. This is, this is a right, the state recommended that we have this policy, MASC is, is a quality. We, we went through it. Uh, 
thought about removing that instructional material thing. We checked it with Rebecca. She said it was fine. So it doesn't make them do anything else? Nope. No. Mm -hmm. Nope. Okay. Absolutely. That's no. all I want to check on. Thank you. That's our first question on all new policies. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, yeah. I, knew, I knew you were asking, but I just wanted to make sure it was asked. Okay, thank you. Okay, so this is for first read, and so by the next read, we'll have that policy. Is that right? The JI, whatever? No, we won't have that one yet, that. but I'll put a reference on the document that it will be forthcoming. Okay. So, so that if anybody. Can we vote for it at that point if it's a cross reference to something we don't have? Mm, it's not great form, but I don't see form. a problem I, with doing I, it. Okay. I can remove it and then we'll have to have put an addendum. I know, in I know, I know, and that would be annoying. I'd, yeah, I'd yeah. rather just state okay. that it's forthcoming. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, subcommittee and liaison reports. Um, budget. So, um, budget met on Monday, and you heard a lot of mm -hmm. what our discussion was. Um, first, the outlook for the FY18 budget, mm -hmm. um, which is not as happy as we would like. Um, and second, um, we took care of the approval of right. the budget transfer right. to address the concerns that were raised. Um, and we'll be meeting again on the 10th mm -hmm. uh, of January and at 6 p.m. here. Okay, great. Uh, community relations, Ms. Starks is not here. I can say that we had our first ever um, office hours. Um, first ever, I, maybe we've had it before, but first since I've been on the committee. Um, at kickstand uh, this weekend, um, nobody showed up, <laughs> but the several people good. stopped and thanked us for having the office hours, even though they didn't come to the office hours. Oh, so it, for, in terms of public relations, it was a positive thing. I also think that if we choose to do this um, going forward, that we will, um, we will advertise it more thoroughly, and we, we really didn't do that much advertising yet. Um, I think Cindy wants to be here for the vote on this, but she wants, she wants to suggest a schedule um, for this year as a trial basis. Um, and the, the goal would be for each member to commit to two of these mm -hmm. for the year. And we'll just see how it goes. If it doesn't work, you know, we don't have to do it next year, but we'll just see it. Yes. Just Mr. a suggestion through the chair. Would you ask her to s submit uh, a, Beforehand. a doodle or whatever? Uh, for us to sign yes. up ahead of time so that we can pass on it. Yes, I think, I think she wants to um, give us a list of dates for us to approve, but we don't actually, are, we're not committing now sort of when we're, because we want to allow for the possibility of substitutions. Right. You, know, you, right. you know, we can keep this informal about, yes, I can do this one. Oh, no, I can't. Can somebody else cover for me type of thing? So, yeah. Um, okay, uh, District Accountability Curriculum Instruction and Assessment, Mr. Schlickman. We will be meeting next Monday. It should be a oh, fun yes. meeting. Yeah, come on down. Uh, <laughs> uh, Jack Schneider, who is an Assistant Professor of Education at the College of the Holy Cross mm -hmm. and Director of Research for the Mass Consortium for Innovative Education Assessment, will be talking to us about the consortium. Yep. Uh, and uh, talking about what the consortium is looking to do and whether, you know, engaging in a conversation with us as to what the requirements for being involved might be and mm -hmm. so we can think about do we want to play with them or not. Mm -hmm. uh, totally non-pressure, but it's just going to be informational. But, it, right. uh, you know, it, it, it's right. sort of an interesting group. I know that I'm working with them uh, through my position in Lowell. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, that's next Monday. And just to fill in, uh, five thirty right here. Five thirty right here. Um, this is hopefully to get the piece. Uh, we met with another member of this consortium um, from the Center for Collaborative Education, but they didn't have information about the piece that Mr. Jack Schneider will be talking about, mm -hmm. which is sort of the community engagement aspect mm -hmm. of the piece. And so, so hopefully we'll get a bigger, a fuller picture, mm -hmm. having heard from both of those people. Great. Um, facilities, Mr. Thelen. So the facilities, all three of us are on the school enrollment task force. We meet on the school enrollment task force meets on the 21st at 6 p.m. right here mm -hmm. uh, to right talk here. about the Hardy School. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, you know, our committee would meet if we needed to mm -hmm. caucus beforehand, but I don't think that's necessary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, warrant committee, Mr. Hainer. Everybody get paid. Okay. Uh, any liaison reports? How about policies? policies. Oh, I'm sorry. 
Last time you skipped the page. Anyway, I did. I'm so sorry. I want to begin off by saying our next meeting is next Tuesday, December 13th at 5.30 in this room. And at our last meeting, uh, the subcommittee uh, asked uh, for the full committee's input on the policy to have a single signer for the vendor warrant mm -hmm. before we go forward with drafting a policy. Mm -hmm. um, there, there was discussion about our fiduciary responsibility as a whole group, understanding difficulty of getting four people to sign it all the time, but at the same time, mm -hmm. How would you like that to be? If it's a single person, should that person literally be talking to the group, sharing with the group uh, concerns that he or she might have? I, I don't know. That's why we're asking for the input from the full committee. Yeah. Mr. Slipman. I mean, I mean, there are a whole bunch of questions that we need to ask ourselves before we go forward. Mm -hmm. uh, one of which is, should this only be uh, a one person signing at times of uh, duress, right. in other words, when we the don't summer. have a school committee meeting right. that aligns with the, the warrant, because right now we've got the warrant, they're generally prepared for us mm -hmm. uh, on a timely basis uh, on the night of the school committee, we can look it over and sign it. If one person is signing the warrant for the committee, is authorized by the committee, uh, would there be a reading period where the warrant would be available electronically to the members so that we can look at it and uh, ask a question through the uh, uh, CFO's office uh, before it gets signed? Um, th those are basically the sorts of questions that, that, that were before us and before crafting a policy you'd sort of want to resolve those kinds of issues. Right. So that, that's where we're at. Right. Mm -hmm. I would be concerned. I would want the burden to be shared. So I know you are in this Warren Committee, and, and this burden is falling entirely on you. Um, I think for this kind of thing, it would be good to have it rotate by the chair, by the, you know, mm -hmm. this, Des designee should be should rotate right so so it shouldn't just be potentially one person but it, it should that be becomes a legal question aligned to the law so we should query town council right. whether we can structure it that way well i think it sounds I mean, like yeah just on yeah, that, yeah yeah the if we decide under, since the the state has allowed a single person to sign it right uh, this new thing the the committee may designee designate two people right, to yes. sign it. Mm -hmm. Only one signs it, though. Mm -hmm. right. uh, up to two so people. So it could be the if chair you, and the if you, don't, if you move away the, from the force, the majority of the committee. Right. So, I mean, if, they, if it, right now, mm -hmm. the, the uh, payroll warrant, the chair still has that authority right. to do it. I'm doing it. Right. When I was away, uh, right. the chair took it over. So there was no mm -hmm. problem with that. And that, that stays with anything. The, the vice chair can always sign for the chair. Right. But I think the issue that uh, Mr. Schlickman brought up, is this going to be an all-time deal, or should it be just in times when the full committee mm -hmm. doesn't meet? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I think that's a, 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 a thing to craft mm -hmm. to go with it. Mm -hmm. I I, I'd be in favor of it just in times when the school committee doesn't meet. I mean, that this is kind mm -hmm. of, this is to deal with the summer problem, mm -hmm. right? Yep. That where we're, our, you know, half is our invocation. Yep. You know, it's just really, it's tricky. We also tricky. just had four weeks between committee meetings. Right. Uh, so that, that would have been an opportunity we had, because we had, we had to chase we had a situation. Four yeah, right. We had right. to come chasing right. in here the day right. before Thanksgiving. Right, right. Yeah. Right. Um, um, well, it sounds like it's, I can people bring it, are, are. I can bring a draft dealing with that piece. Yeah, yeah it sounds like First. there's enough interest in pursuing the question of it. Okay. Does that sound right? I mean, talk about yeah. policies and procedures. Then. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. It, it, that, mm -hmm. That's a good start to get that piece. We can begin yeah. with a draft. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll, I'll bring a draft to you folks for next week. No, that's good. Thank you. Great. Okay. I think I've ever written. Yes. Oh, sorry. I saw the school enrollment. That's why I slipped over. Sorry about that. Yeah, that confused But you um, address that. Yes. Okay. Uh, liaison reports then. Yes, Mr. Hainer. Sherman Town Building Committee met the other night. Dr. Bodie talked mainly about it. Uh, Thompson, Stratton, and Gibbs are all on schedule to complete it on time. Great. That's all I got to say about that. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Mm -hmm. um, other liaison reports? Any announcements? Yes, Mr. Hainer. Today, the Stratton third grade uh, students met at Town Hall for a mock town meeting. I wish to commend publicly uh, the three third grade teachers. They did a phenomenal job organizing these students. They mm -hmm. came in, they followed uh, all the procedures. 
I had one gentleman come up to me before we got started and he greeted me with good morning, Mr. Moderator. Uh, they uh, <laughs> were a little bit nervous, but uh, 59 of them came there. They had three articles, uh, one to remove alcohol from the town completely. One student got up and made the statement that uh, people are still going to use it. They will go out of town and we will lose the taxes. That article <laughs> failed. Third grade. Hooray. Third, Third grade. grade. Very astute. Amazing. The second <laughs> article was to uh, build a park and a public garden in town. It passed by two votes wow. and that passed. The third one, which we all, all the adults thought was going to pass resoundingly, was to have a public swimming pool. Only five students voted for it. And it failed. And uh, it, was, it was on for fiscal reasons, right? Yes. The students were concerned one of the about students the fiscal had gotten up effect and said, on the town. One of the students got up and said, there are a lot of people that will have to pay for this in their taxes, but they won't get to use it. And then he said, by age. And they all looked at me <laughs> at that point. But uh, very, the, the teachers did a wonderful job in the, in the etiquette and stuff. And uh, I, I am really proud of the students. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, we had a lot of parents there. And it was a wonderful time. And I have to say, you're amazing for doing this with the students. I mean, it's really... It's um, the kids and the teachers that do it, truly. But mm -hmm. it's, it's really a great blessing. Thank you. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. um, any other announcements? Uh, future agenda items. Anything we want to see on the agenda that we know of right now? Okay. Uh, so we're going to go into executive session. Uh, to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with union and or non-union personnel or contract negotiations with union and or non-union in which if held in an open meeting may have a detrimental effect. To conduct strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation in which if held in an open meeting may have a detrimental effect. Collective bargaining may also be conducted. To enter 02-16 grievance dated 10-14-2016 for Audison Middle School guidance counselor caseload to comply with the provisions of any general or special law to protect confidentiality, a personal matter, and to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation and or to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with union and or non-union personnel. Vote to approve the following school committee executive session minutes, Thursday, November 10th, 2016. Uh, roll call. Uh, Mr. Cardin? Yes. We need a motion. I'm sorry. So moved. A second. motion by Mr. Hayner, seconded by Mr. Slickman. Uh, are we coming out? Do, Do we minutes. need to no. for this? No. Vote the minutes. For the no. grievance. No. No. Do we need to? No. 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 We don't need to come out. No. Okay, so we're not coming out of the session. Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, roll call, Mr. Cardin. Yes. 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 Good. Mm -hmm.